one. Blog Talk Radio. Episode and all episodes of the Hard Rocket Sports Show are sponsored by Joseph J. Giasio, the official realtor of the Hard Rocket Sports Show. Well, guys, let's say you're out there looking to buy or sell your home, or maybe it's time to get out of mom and dad's house and you're looking to rent your very, very first place. Well, this is all pretty scary stuff, and maybe you need some expert help. Well, say no more. Jeff and I suggest you reach out to one of the nicest people we know, someone who will listen to your needs and wants and help you in your quest. Well, that person is none other than Staten Island Realtor Jay Giasio. Jay, a fixture in the Staten Island Realtor community for many years, will know how to help you and make this often painful experience a lot easier. We are extremely happy to have Jay as one of our sponsors and to find out more about Jay, or to find ways to contact him, please go to josephgiasio.agentsquared.com. You can also stop by the Hot Rocket Sports page and find a link to Jay's website on our homepage. Please support the people who support our show. With the players. Come on, live direct from hell's final act. But hey, enough of my yakking. What do you say? Let's boogie. And that's my cue to start the show. Welcome to another Thursday edition of the Hard Rocket Sports Show, live from high atop Hard Rocket Sports Studios in beautiful scenic Monroe, New Jersey. We are your three-hour weekly get-together where we bring you all the biggest news from around the worlds of hard rock, heavy metal, and, of course, the wide world of sports. And, guys, welcome to Thursday night, July the 22nd. And uh, we, uh, I'm glad you guys are here with us. I guess I hope you're here with us. Otherwise, it's going to be very boring for me and Jeff. But we do this all the time, so we don't need you anyway. Nah, we'd like to have you, though. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys have had a great week. Uh, weather's been nice. Uh, a little hot. It's a little not so hot. But uh, it's uh, it's been a nice week. And uh, rain every day feels like. But uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed your week. Uh, looking forward to another good show tonight. We got a lot. lot I have a lot to talk about uh, from Yankee baseball, some good Yankee baseball. Uh, more injuries for the Yankees and the Mets. We'll talk a little Jets and Giants going into camp. Uh, camp's about to open up next week. Uh, we got a great guest tonight, Bobby Gustafson, our dear friend Bobby. I should say dear friend. I never met Bobby, but I've talked to him a hundred times on the show. So I do consider him a friend at this point. He's done some favors for us in the, on the show. Uh, Bobby's uh, now in the band Violence, and they'll be going out on tour. They got an album. They got an EP coming up. So we'll catch up with Bobby first time on video. So we'll get to see Bobby face-to-face for the first time. 
I got to talk to him a little bit about Florida. I think he lives in the area I'm going to be heading down to uh, next week. So don't forget where the show is off next Thursday night. We have a week off. Then we're back August the 5th uh, with the boys from uh, Barstool and Band Talk. That's right. Our good friends up in Canada, Barstools and Band Talk, uh, Sean, uh, Dave, and Alex. I think we'll be joining Jeff and I for the first uh, maybe half hour of the show on the 5th. And then it's all football all the time. I'm hoping to have some guests, some people call in, talk about their teams. And uh, it's it's one of my favorite shows of the year. Uh, we just had the, my favorite show of the year, which is the Jeff Birthday Show. Now we're going to be doing that. So, guys, stick around. There's plenty to get to tonight. We'll talk about uh, Jerry Jones. We're going to talk uh, uh, underwear. Ah, we're going to talk a little about underwear tonight. So I'm not going to give you too many details, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about it. But, uh, again, guys, I hope you guys have had a great week. Uh, I'm looking forward to a nice vacation. I'm exhausted. And it's not getting easy. I got to tell you, as the weekends – it's getting busier and busier and busier and busier. I, I almost had to cancel the show tonight. I just have so much to do. I didn't prepare for this show. This is going to be winging it. But I think Jeff and I are good enough to get through a show, and uh, we'll make it happen, and uh, we'll talk about a million things and a little bit of nothing. Iron Maine's got a new song out. Uh, I, I have to talk about Jerry. You got all you got all emotional. Hey, Matt, hey, Will. He got all emotional, Matt. I got to talk about Jerry. He said he screwed up the team, and I have to agree. You know, it's what was it one one playoff win in twenty years? Uh, you know, I, but like I said, fill him with from all from out the height and let him keep picking picks. I'm all over it. So we'll see what happens. We got a lot to get to. Let's get Jeff on the show. We'll kick it off, uh, and we'll get my dad on. We'll talk a little bit of sports. We'll talk some music tonight. Remember, new Iron Maiden songs out. We'll talk about the Foo Fighters. Um, uh, we got a few things to talk about music wise. So stick around and uh, let's get to it. Let's bring on. The back motor on Rocket Sports Show, my friend of 40 years and the sexiest man on his side of the screen, Mr. Jeff Tolan. First, hello, Will. How are you? Second, Matt, the Cowboys and Jerry Jones. Do not listen to Tommy, please. All right. He has a general manager who sucks. All right. This team doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. They have so many issues. I can't wait for the football show. All right. Mm -hmm. Do not let him pick on Jerry Jones and the Cowboys. Tom, how are you? Uh, third, when the underwear segment comes up, I'm out. You're out. I'm out. You have I'm to talk about I ain't talking about that. You have to talk about underwear. No. It's very important. No, you know why? Because why? I have a whole drawer full right here. Uh-huh. We could just get some out but right no, now. No, none, none of them are as... Do you, as want, you want a pair? No, none of them are as interesting as the underwear I'm going to show you tonight. So you have to stick around because that's the way the show works. Uh. That's how the show works, my friend. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Matt, Iron Maiden does not have the original lead singer. Lead well, singer. The original lead singer was Paul Diano. I bet you, I was going to say, I bet you Matt thinks that, that Dickinson is the original. Most people, you know, who aren't, you know, true Maiden fans might not realize there was a singer before Diano because really the big album that broke them There's out. actually was a couple was singers before Diano, uh, before uh, Dickinson. Before that, yes, oh, not on record. Right, on record, yes, you're 100 right. Yes, there was other drummers, Thunderstick, yeah, you had other you know, guitar players. So yeah, from Thunderstick was in Samson. Correct. I mean, he was also in Iron Maiden. Pre, pre, uh, pre all that. Yes, he was Samson and Maiden. A lot of the guys back and forth. There was a lot of uh, incest there. I look, look, look at this. Look at this. You see that comment? Look at this. I see it. I see it. He's a cowboy fan. What do you do? He's a cowboy fan. But listen, I thought, I thought it was sweet of Jerry Jones, 78 years old, and he said he didn't know how he screwed it up. Jerry, I can tell you how, to screw it, how you screwed it up. First, you fired Jimmy Johnson because you thought you were the man and you didn't want to give anybody credit. Second of all, you keep making all the picks. Keep doing it, my friend. We love it. As a giant fan, Jerry Jones is my favorite general manager. And yeah, but you know what? The, the, even though he's made a few mistakes, a few. You're, you're not talking about a, a, an overall bad team, though, Tom. No, this is but a Jeff, team that has some some success. Jeff, I'm not disagreeing, but when when it's twenty something years, it's co it's close to thirty years since their last championship. When you're talking about a team that's please, won one please, playoff please, game in twenty please, years, please, please stop. What? Stop. I know, Jeff. Your Jets. 50 stop. Years. I get it. For a I get second, it. stop. I get it. Fifty years. Right, when, you, when you haven't fucking won anything since nineteen sixty nine, you're I, gonna come I, on I, here and bitch that you haven't won anything in twenty years. Are you fucking I, kidding me? I'm, I'm listen, I'm not, defend, I'm not defending your Jets. I'm just saying. I'm I'm I'm, I'm throwing them right into the fire. I'll be the I, first I, one. I, Everybody I, comes on here and defends their teams. I okay. I, that my how many years? 
How many years did I tell you the Jets weren't going to be good for quite some time? Didn't I? You did. Okay. All right. Just just as long as I get well, credit. That, for what does that have to do with Jerry Jones screwing up the Cowboys for thirty years? Because Matt is a believer. I I don't think Matt's even a believer, but Matt knows that Jerry's got to go. He's a good owner, a terrible GM, and that's just a fact. The guys have put together a great team. He had his chance, 2007, but Tony Romo went to, to Cancun with Jessica Simpson, and that was it. It was over from there. Let me yeah. ask you something. Yeah. All right. You're on the show now. Thank you me. have the chance to go to Cancun with Jessica Simpson. You say no? Again, Jeff, I'm not saying what I would do or not. All I'm saying is uh, I just said yes and no you're question. Winning, if you're winning, if you have a chance to win a playoff game and go to the Super Bowl, you stay home, you stay rested, and you get ready to play the game. You got three months after the season's over to do whatever. You got more than that. You got six months after the season's over to do whatever you want. Listen, this is how you're going to look at it, okay? Yeah. I'm not saying Jessica Simpson's the prettiest girl in the world, but she's pretty. I'm sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. First, <laughs> if you have the chance, you're Tony Romo, you have the chance to go hang out with her in Cancun for a few days, you got to take it. And I'll tell you why, before, especially before the Super Bowl. Because if you wait till after the Super Bowl and then you lose, yeah, she may have shacked up with the guy that won the yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. So you need to you need to pounce while the iron is hot. Oh, you said it's fine, but the, it's bad optics. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. You're the Bahamas and lost. You're 100 correct. I'm not right, so I, I I would have done the same thing. I would have went off to the Bahamas too. And what did he write there? Arrested, right? How about all the Giants tonight before a playoff game? Went to the yeah, and they took. And by the way, it was a sausage fest on the boat. It was Justin Bieber's boat, and they all the Giants were sitting there with their dungarees on and their Listen, chests out, bare chests, kind of gay. I, I thought it was the worst thing they could do, and they lost, and they played terrible in Green Bay, and all of that. I, listen, but. We had just won a Super Bowl a couple of years before. You know, you're not talking about a Cowboys team. You know, we're talking 30 years. I think you guys stay home and take a rest and study the playbook and get ready for the game. So, well, listen, I don't know the playbook by the time the Super Bowl comes. Uh, you ain't gonna just, learn in a couple just days. Just saying, I would. You know, I didn't see Eli in the in the Bahamas. I saw Eli getting ready for games. Look, they could, have talk, they could have took Eli to fucking Coney Island and told him he was in the Bahamas. He would have believed it. Uh, listen, I'm just it's telling you. this time of year, Eli. Well, listen, we'll get to Jerry Jones and, and the Cowboys. And, you know, uh, listen, do, do I think the Cowboys are going to have a good team this year? I think offensively they may have a very good team. I, don't, I still don't believe their defense is any good, and that will keep them from winning the division, my opinion. Okay, I don't think that their, their defense is good enough to win the division. Uh Will they be a better than 500 team? It's possible. I haven't, I haven't sat down and broken down yet, but we'll, we get to that in a couple of weeks on the big NFL training camp show, uh, August the 5th. Jeff and I will break down the entire league, all the divisions. We'll invite a bunch of people on to talk about their teams. If Matt wants to come on August 5th, he's always welcome. Well, did you on. happen to see ESPN and the NFL Network today, by any chance? I did not. I, I, I got home work late, real late from work. I had a, had a busy day today. Oh, oh, that wow. sucks, man. I, I, did you at least get a chance to get washed up, or you have the residue I, of all day with you? I still have the residue of the day with me. Oh, so, yes, God. unfortunately, I didn't. I not, got in, quick, quick, quick bite to eat, uh, went to use the uh, latrine, and uh, got right on the show. So, all right, well, uh, real, real quick, because I know we got other things going to happen tonight. Yep. All right, uh, the NFL that added an extra game yep. and, and took out a, a, a preseason game and made sure that they added their 17th game of the season. That's correct. Has now said that they will not allow makeup games this year. Yes, I saw that. I saw that article. Okay. Yeah. I think that, that that is so stupid on their part. Well, wait. Did you see the whole thing? You got, there's a whole part to that. First, they said – No, I didn't. I did that. Okay, I just so saw that because I saw most of the players started to tweet about it and everything else. Yeah, there's if more – If I was them – I'm sorry. If I was them – if anything, I would have wanted a second buy this year. Well, they didn't. They didn't negotiate for that. But so I know that. that is, if there's a COVID outbreak on your team, and the majority of it is unvaccinated players, they will not postpone the game. They will cancel the game, and the team who had the, the outbreak will forfeit the game. Will forfeit the game, and the players who and the game did not get played. The players will not get paid for the game. Because they want all the players to get vaccinated and they're not. So they can't force them to get vaccinated. But they're telling them if you get an outbreak and it's a bunch of you guys who aren't vaccinated, 
your team will forfeit and nobody gets paid. Interesting. See how that works out. Yeah, that that's that's Gestapo type tactics. So the, man. So the, the NFL has basically said we're we're going to play seventeen games in eighteen weeks. We're not adding any games on. We're not moving games. We're not doing any of that stuff. If you can't field your team, you will forfeit the game and nobody gets paid. Now I'm not sure if it's nobody gets paid for either team or just the team that forfeits. That I'm not sure about. I, I, I would imagine it would probably be just the team that forfeits. It's very because possible. if your team say we're playing, yep, and you're healthy. Yep. And you're ready to go, but my guys are sick. Hmm? Why? Why should my team being I, sick? I I agree with you. You know, bother your agree. team. I agree. No, no, I I agree with that 100. percent I don't. And I don't know. Yeah. last year they didn't have any preseason games, correct? I don't believe they played any preseason games. I believe no. I don't think yeah. they did. I, they I didn't play any that. preseason games. So this year you're adding preseason games, great them, mm-hmm. and adding a 17th game to the season. So yeah. it's almost like the NFL is trying uh-huh. to see what they can do to get these guys sick. Well, think about it. I mean, it's the same amount of regular se- – it's the same amount of games in a year, just one more counts, one less doesn't count. So if you're still playing the same amount of games you would play in a regular year. Now, I will agree with you, uh, but I, I got to be honest so if your team, if your team misses one game because of COVID – all right, now your pay is going to be based on a 17-game schedule instead of a 16-game schedule, I would imagine. Uh-huh. All right, so that means you forfeit that check. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, so you. your salary is based on 17 parts now, no? Actually, yes. no, that's not true because they get paid for the offseason. They get no, paid a different way. No. They don't get paid per game. No, they get paid per game. They do. They get a game check. Yeah, no, no, you don't get paid. You don't get checks during the, during the offseason. I'm almost 100% sure. They get their game. Their, their checks are broken into seventeen weeks. All right. So if they if they lose, and if you and if it happens more than once, mm-hmm. the NFL is the one that pushed for the seventeen games. Uh, yes, the NFL wanted seventeen games. The the, the players didn't want. So if, uh, if all the teams, teams yeah. if all of the teams mm-hmm. lose one game because of COVID this year, yep. uh huh. Okay. That was on the NFL's doing because they pushed a 17 game schedule. The, the, nah. the players association didn't ask for a 17. No, I got it. But how do you how do you say that that one extra game did it? What what if a guy gets I'm saying the one extra game did it? All I'm saying is is that they should have been playing 16 games. I, now I, you I, expanded I, the season by one game. Right. So now, if all of these teams, if all 32 teams in the NFL lose one game because of COVID, okay, okay, that is the 17th game of the season. Say. Yeah. Okay. So now if they lose money, they're losing money because the NFL wanted the 17th game. Why not hold off until this pandemic was over? Which you know one day it's going to be over. Okay. Uh, I got a feeling next. What's that? I don't think they're talking about bringing mask mandates back. They're talking about. Well, um, this year. I think by next year. That's because they want everybody to have the the vaccine. Yes, I guess. That's why they're going to have mask mandates and everything else. And it's going to happen very soon. Yes. Without a doubt, it's going to happen. Okay, because that's what they want, and they want to force everybody. They're talking about healthcare workers in the city. They're talking about city workers yep, for New yep. York City about they're figuring out how to get everybody the vaccine because they want everybody vaccinated. Yeah, and they're going to make life a living hell for you until yep. you get vaccinated. Correct, absolutely. I so, agree, but I don't agree with you that the NFL it would it would be the responsibility of the NFL if this happened because they added a 17th game. What if what if a team not, like a week in the season, Jeff, gets sick? I'm not, I'm not saying that it's their responsibility. Okay. I'm saying it's their fault why because fault? they added this 17th game. But why? I don't stand. What's the difference if they – Because if, if, they, game? Because if a team gets if, sick in week two, what's the, set? what's the difference? Because it doesn't matter. If a team loses one game throughout the season, Yeah. okay, I understand what you're saying, but figure – think. listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. If they lose one game, figure that's the seventeenth game of the season. Okay, you know what I mean. And if if they between buys and everything last year, they had room to move. They were able to sw- switch some games around and everything else. Uh-huh. Now they're just coming out of the bat and they're saying we're not going to switch games. We're not going to make them up. This that, and the other thing because they want to have that seventeenth game. If they did not have that seventeenth right, game, I, I get it gives them saying. room to move. I, I, regardless I, I, of when it when well, don't forget they still have the, the extra week. They still have the extra week between the Super Bowl and the other. So if they had to push everything out a week to make up games. But they already they, said they, that they're not doing that. Right. That's the difference. there's a difference between uh, and again their point is 
get all vaccinated. Now, again, there's, does just because you get vaccinated doesn't mean you don't get it. You had all these idiot senators on a plane, uh, Democrat senators on a plane, all spo- supposedly vaccinated, 12 of them, I think it is, and six or seven of them got got uh, got sick. So, you know, I, I, it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. They're just trying to push this along to get everybody vaccinated, and I, and I understand it, but that does not mean – Look at the Yankees. All, all the guys who got sick from the Yankees all were vaccinated. So what's the difference? So I, I mean, I, I get the point. I'm not because now they're, they're trying to hit everybody up with the I vaccine. Listen, saying that that if you have the vaccine, the symptoms aren't as bad. I got and, it. And you're not going to be as sick as if you had didn't have the vaccine. I, I but get nobody it. knows that. Nobody knows that is right. My my. Therefore, they want to force my wife if she doesn't get the the, uh, the vaccine by October first. She's she's being terminated. You got to be kidding me! I'm not kidding you. So I, we're actually discussing going to a lawyer and see if it's legal, because it wasn't part of her job description when she took the job. So why, you know, she should be almost grandfathered in. There are other options, but they actually sent a letter out and said that if you don't get the vaccine, the first shot of the vaccine by by October first, you will be terminated. Wow! But again, wow. again, if I say this, if you want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. Uh, it's good for you. If if it's not for me, it's not for me. There's, uh, there are more people out there than you think who are getting negative reactions, you know, heart problems, all sorts of issues. I'm not telling you that the majority of people are, are, are okay with it, but there are also a lot of people getting sick anyway. Are they getting as sick? I don't know. I got sick from it without, without vaccinate, being vaccinated, Jeff, and I didn't want to put a ventilator. You got sick. You didn't want to put a ventilator. Just because no, you get no, something God. does not mean you're going to wind up on a ventilator. It I did. thought when you told me that you got sick, <clears throat> I, I thought that was the end of you. I really did. I, I was like, this this guy, because this is in the very beginning. Sure. You were the first person I knew that had it. Right. And when you called me up or you texted me and you were like, I got COVID. I was like, oh, I remember telling Sharon. I was like, that's it. I said, he's done. I said, that's that's it. He's done. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I, I felt like I was dying. I just didn't feel well. But again, everybody's different and everybody reacts to things differently. And I still say 99% of the people who get it survive. Sorry. Uh, you well, know. 98, 98%. Oh, 98%. Sorry, 98, I apologize. 98%. Got to give that percentage where it's yeah, due. I got it. I, I, Sleepy Joe needs the percentage. I, I get it. I, I told, it's, all, it's all good. But we'll see, guys. We've got a lot to get to. Let's get my dad on, see what he wants to talk about. Bobby Gubson is coming up at about 7, uh, 745. Uh, we, again, we got a lot to talk about tonight. Are you Maiden's new song? We'll talk Jets and Little Jets and Giants in a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about Aaron Rodgers. That saga won't go away. And I told you that you sh- they shouldn't have drafted Julian Love. Bam, he sucks. He can't play. There it is, Matt. You, you kiss my ass. I told you, bad pick. But that's okay. Now we'll get to that in the, in the NFL training camp show. But let's get my dad on, Jeff. Let's see what he has to say. Go ahead, man. What up, Pop? What's up, guys? Um, How you doing, Mr. Florio? Interesting about a lot of things. Okay. And uh, nobody knows anything, so whatever. Right. I watched the basketball game. Okay. Mostly the championship. <clears throat> okay. And uh, I enjoyed it. I really, really did. Okay. It was one of the few games that I saw mm-hmm. where you couldn't buy, nobody bought a championship. Right. I agree so with that. Phoenix, and I was so happy that the Nets <clears throat> yes. lost. Me too. Not because... Not because I'm a Knicks fan, but I just think it's you shouldn't be able to go around picking teams who you want to win the championship with. Yes. And it seems that's what's been happening for the last few years. Now, these so-called three superstars that are with the Nets, and I don't guarantee, I don't say they're not good ball players, mm-hmm. they're great ball hotbeds, ball players, but it just goes to show you mm-hmm. that you can't buy a championship. And even with the best, you can't do it. There's just something about it. I mean, I, I've seen, which I consider the three best ball players on the team, Chamberlain, West, mm-hmm. and Baylor. You couldn't get better than that. Right. And they won, I think, one or two championships. Mm-hmm. It's very hard. I was. This was a really good series. It was. I didn't watch a lot of it. I I, I was happy that the Bucks won uh, for the reason you said, that because they, they did not go out there and buy a championship. They built it. They got, they drafted a couple of uh, top level guys. They put some free agents around them. You know, smaller guys, guys who come out and do, and do their job. And it's refreshing to watch a team go out there and build a team the right way instead of buying it like the Nets did or the Lakers have done 
or some other teams. And uh, I, I enjoyed it. I thought I thought it was a lot of fun. And uh, you know, I, listen, I don't think Giannis is a great is a great player. I think he's a really good player, but he had a superb championship game, fifty points, and uh, I'm very glad they won. It was a great, it was a, it was a nice series, and uh, I'm glad the Bucks won it. It was nice to see somebody go through the draft system. Absolutely, and get these young kids in instead instead of having these so called guys making. Thirty thirty five million dollars a year. Yeah, and like, oh, after we win the championship for the next, who will we go to next and help them? I mean, they, they, I mean, in the Yankees too. I feel a lot of times the Yankees do the same thing. They go out and they buy, and, and it just shows that look, they're winning with small ball. Now, yeah, I, last night was a oh, perfect, absolutely perfect. I was so shocked when when Tories wanted him over. Ah, uh, we all were. Absolutely, it's it's I very it's, fell out of the chair. yeah. It's very it's very 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 uh, unlikely uh, that they do this stuff. And I love this kid, Allen. Whether he sticks or not, it's been fun to watch him steal bases, all the stuff they're doing with him. So you know, I gotta tell you, it's the, it's been a fun week to be a Yankee fan for for, for a while. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, not everything's good. And okay. uh, Jeff, you <laughs> you did good, Jeff. I agree with a lot of what you said. Thank you. And uh, I'm, uh, Tommy, I, I got to see you over the weekend. Yes. Week. Yeah, you're going down to AC and tomorrow night, right? Tomorrow night. Uh, okay. We're home Saturday. Maybe we'll go out to dinner Sunday. Saturday, if you're not doing nothing. All right, we'll, we'll get. Yeah, I, 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 we will tell you the guys to come over. But yeah, let's let's uh, give us a call when you get no, home no, on no, Saturday. No, no, no. Are you going to tell us to come over? Well, no, okay. we just either way, but I'm saying we can go get my teeth, then you come back, we'll kind of go over everything for the week and all that good stuff. So give us a call, give us a call when you get back from AC. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I have to go to work for you. Well, if you need, if you need anything, Jeff and I'll drive down some cash for your job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice all right, too. Have a good week, guys. Talk all right, to Pops. You. Take care, Tom. There you go. See you later. That's my daddy checks in every week with us, and it's always good to to get his perspective on things. But, yeah, Jeff, you know, I know you don't watch much baseball, but it's been a good week for the Yankees. A lot of uh, – lot of well, actually, ball. I, I, I want to say to uh, – comment real quick about the basketball. Oh, God, yeah, please. I wanted to – You know, it, it's uh, – you're right. The, the way the NBA is run nowadays, I think a lot of these teams – uh, are scared to try to build a team through the draft. Everybody, is as joking. opposed to mm -hmm. just looking and buying mm -hmm. you guys, because so many teams have had luck that way. Now, yeah, we're, we're just getting certain players and be like, okay, we have this guy, we get this guy. Now, who else do you want? And bang, they're they're like championship contenders. So I, I don't think that you're going to see a lot of teams are going to try to go that route instead of trying to draft guys. Because to the, to try to draft players could take three three to five years. You got to figure, oh. if not more. Whereas opposed to you could buy a, a couple pawns for the for your uh, game there, and uh, you know maybe have a championship team in two years instead. And, and and if depending on how they're signed, you can have them for three to five years contended. No, I, Jeff, I I don't disagree. I, I and and there's nothing wrong with it. I don't I don't I don't like. And here's the thing. For me, well, there, there is something wrong with it because you know what? There, there's not enough guys to say that each team has two solid guys on every no. team. Yeah. Okay. So now there's some teams that have two, mm -hmm. some games, teams that have three or more. So if you're one of the teams that have three or more because me, you, and Paul wanted to play on the same team, and now here comes Joey and Jimmy, mm -hmm. and they want to play with us, you know, this does take away from other teams. Oh, I now, agree. They understand it's not. There, it's not your problem if that's how it goes, right? But you know, you do want to see a little bit more than just parity in the in the uh, uh, in any league. You don't want half the teams to be fourteen and two, and the other teams to be two and fourteen. I agree. You, you know, you want to have a, a little bit of competition too. You know, no, I agree with you, and and I'm not a fan of it. But see, there's two ways to look at it. You know, if you're a if you're an owner of a team and there's five free agents out there, and you go sign all five of them, nobody's gonna rip you apart. Now they'll say you built a team, uh, you bought your team, whatever. But what I, I don't like is when the players get together, for some reason it bothers me, when the players get together and say, hey, you, me, and so-and-so are going to get on the same team and I'm going to do whatever I have to do to force my way off my team so I can come play with you. Well, because that's that's exactly, that's a big thing right there, okay? Yeah. You sign a contract 
uh, a three, five, say you sign a five-year contract, all right? Now, all of a sudden, you see a couple of your friends going out west, and they're, and they, you know, starting to team up on a team, and you're like, oh, and if I go over there, I'm going to win a championship in no time. Or I could just end up playing with my friends. And then I, it, I, and it sucks. It sucks to see that happening. No, I got you it. I, yeah, I, 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 I get it. And um, I, see, Matt, Matt just asked me a simple <laughs> question, who I want the, the Knicks to pick up. And it's you know for me, I love the fact that the Knicks are building around the two young guys in um, uh, uh, Randall and uh, Julius Randall and the kid from Duke. Uh, man, I'm drawing a blank right now. But I, I, they're both getting better. And I, I, what I don't want is the Knicks to bring in some. You know, they were talking about bringing Chris Paul in, who's who's 36, going to be 37 years old next year. I don't want that player. You can get Lill Lillard, Lillard from from Portland. You get a, another superstar. You need a point guard on this team is what the Knicks need. So I would like to see him get a point guard. Uh, I'm not sure who I would want. They have two first-round draft picks this year. So, you know, and they're a little later in the draft, 19 and 21, I believe. But I, I agree, Jeff. Listen, at the end of the day, you if you're a fan, you don't care how you get there. I am I am, but I, I looking from the outside for a team, I I would root for, I rooted for the Bucks over the Nets because I didn't like the way the Nets built their team. Because three players forced their way onto the same team to try to create, no. you know, super. Is, team. Isn't this the second year of that super team now? No, this is their first year. This they, they well, well, it was no, their no, first no. year because what's his face? Uh, because they were injured. hurt last year. Yes, because yes, you're right, Jeff. Two of them were there last year, and then and then Harden forced his way onto the team this year. Okay, so, so yeah. let's just say that next year it doesn't happen either. Right, you know, somewhere along the line, some of these guys got to turn around and say, you know what, I'm getting older, and, and I don't want to waste my time. I'm wasting time here, yeah, with, with these guys, and and it's not happening. There, there's, you know, whatever, and and you'll see this start to fall apart. You know what made LeBron and and Chris Bosh were able to do it because they were like the first team to really, yes, do yeah. it. Absolutely, they, they were the first you know out, out and say, yeah, we're. They got together at a wedding and said, let's play on the same team, and they forced their way into it, and they got it done. But you're, you're right, Jeff. That was the first team, and, and, and it happens more and more. But I'm hoping with the Bucs winning the championship this year, and again, would the Bucs have won it if Harden's healthy throughout the throughout that series, if if, if Kyrie didn't blow out his, uh, his, his ankle, you know, uh, if Durant steps you know, two inches back on the line and hits that three uh, instead of a two, you know, again, it could be a completely different series. So, and Matt, you're right. They do need a guy who can take over for Randall, who played great all year and disappeared in the playoffs. So, uh, again, I still like to see it to be a point guard, but it, it could be a shooter. I just don't want to see them overload this team with with superstar players um, and change the dynamic. This team, these guys played every game, and and I want to see it say that way. So, Jeff, but I agree with you, Jeff. Yeah, it, it's uh, you know, I don't like it. I, I root against it. But you're right. If it was my team, I would probably be okay with it, to be honest with you. Well, listen, if you're reaping the benefits of it, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. but that's but, still. you know, if it's not working yeah. for you, sooner or later, you're going to like, why Why am I paying for this? Why do I have this? Why am I stuck here? Yeah. When nothing is going the right way. So Yeah, no, understood. So, yeah, guys out there, I, I know there's a lot to talk to uh, talk about still. So, I want to talk a little bit uh, in a minute about uh, the NFL and social justice again. But, uh, you know, again, guys, Bobby Gustafson's coming up. Uh, we talked a little about the NFL COVID, the, the new COVID rules, the forfeit rule. I never thought in my my lifetime I would see the NFL have a have a forfeit rule. You know, I I, 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 I totally agree with you. Yeah, I think that I, I don't like. You know, I don't. I wouldn't like it. Um, I, I I didn't like it as a kid when when you played games. And you show up, and the other team had to forfeit. Um, I don't like it now. You know, Sunday morning comes, and I get to see a giant game. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent. I, I don't want the win because they've got got a forfeit win. You know what I mean, Jeff? I, I... how is that going to work, Tom? You know, this, this is why I think that they should have made a second. I know, I know where you're going. Go ahead, go with it. I know where you're going to go with it. It's like you know how when are they going to turn around? Suppose Saturday morning you find out that uh, there's too many guys that are sick. Are they going to cancel it right away? You know what they? Yeah. You know are they going to try to retest these guys? What are they going to do? Yeah, I don't last know. Last year, yeah. how is it that we didn't lose any games last year mm -hmm. during the height of the pandemic? Correct. The height of the pandemic, we didn't lose any games last well, year. Don't forget, last year they were 
really forcing these guys to go go to practice, go home, go to practice, go home. Now everybody's kind of running around out there, no masks. They're able to go wherever they want to go. So it's a little different than later. There was almost in a bubble last year as opposed to this year where guys are you know, basically doing whatever they want to do. Some people wear masks, some people don't, some are vaccinated, some aren't. So I think – I understand your point, but I think now – it's it's a little freer. Yeah, of course. I mean, because the whole entire world has taken a step in that direction. Absolutely. But, you know, all of a sudden, because of the, the Delta variant, uh, that all of a sudden came out of nowhere because they didn't meet their percentage. Yes. yes. You know, I, I guess that's going to rear its ugly head. And now they're almost like threatening these players and telling them, well, if, you, if you're not vaccinated, then uh, you're, you're going to lose money, you're going to lose a game, you're going to this, you're going to that. That's where we're headed, Jeff. That that's that's it. That's what's what's going on there. They can't force people to do it, but they're trying to shame people into it. And I get. Listen, I get that they want it done. I don't know why, um, but again, it's to me. I'm not. I'm not getting it. So if I if they you know it is what it is, and if I'm restricted to certain things, then I'll be restricted for certain things. But if you don't want me to go to your, your football games, don't worry. I got a couch with a remote and. And there's good food and drink, and I'll stay here. Uh, I don't, Tom. I don't even think it's it's that. It's not that they don't want you to go to games and everything right. else. They want to just have a control for whatever reason on, however it is that whatever that they're thinking. Yeah, that they're you. trying to force this on everybody at this point in time. I mean, come on, the things that they they use to try to get people vaccinated that didn't work. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. No, I get it. You know, now, now that could you imagine if they turn around two weeks from now and say, "All right, everybody's got to wear a mask again, and you can't go into places, and you can't." I think people are gonna just say, "Screw you," and call it a day. I really do believe that. Oh, if you don't, if you don't think you're not wearing a mask by the end of the summer, you're insane. No, again, I'm not saying you're wrong, Jeff. I'm it's just saying definitely going to happen. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm just enjoying every minute. And, of and you know what? And and not for nothing, I, I would I would hear you. I would love to see everybody stand up to that and say, you know what, I'm not wearing a mask. I'm not this, that, any other thing. But just like it happened last year, everybody will fall into line and everybody will wear their mask like they were told to do. Yeah. Because that's what's going to happen. Because when you find out that you can't go get food, you can't go any place, you can't do anything yeah. unless you're wearing a mask, you'll have it on. You know what I mean? It's right. it's bullshit. Yeah, it sucks, but it is what it is. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. We're gonna. We're, we're gonna. Uh, we're probably gonna go through it again. I. I don't see. I. I don't see how it doesn't happen. But you know, it is what it is. But you know, hopefully we get some. We get football and we have a good season. And looking forward to the big show and uh, on August the fifth. And guys, remember we're off next week. We're taking a break. I'm. I'm gonna be heading out to the uh, FLA. Spend the week down in Florida, hanging out. So I'm looking forward to that. We got a lot more COVID stuff to get to. Hey Jeff, I'm gonna sneak this in before Bobby comes on. Um. The NFL has announced that they're going to um, continue to play uh, the, I, I, I'll call it the Black National Anthem before every football game. Now, I think most most games, they don't even show um, the, uh, the the National Anthem, the, our National Anthem uh, before the game anymore. I think they've kind of dis- gone away from it. They kind of show up late and go right to it. Uh, but I wonder, I wonder how the people – in a lot of the states, will react when the the, the when the when the I don't know how else it's called the Black National Anthem is played. Do you do you? I mean, just an opinion, Jeff. Do you think most people will like, just ignore it? Will people show it respect? Will some will people you know sit down during it? What what's your take on how that's going to go? Because last year they did it, but there were no fans in the stands. Now you're getting fans in the stands. I don't know. I guess they're going to end up doing it until. Uh the first riot happens that they're not going to be able to play the game mm. that they're going to be dealing with a riot or which will turn into a humongous 35,000 people race riot. Uh, and uh, and then once they figure out they, how they're going to stop that, then maybe they'll just stop playing the anthem and the black national anthem altogether and, and just, you know, go right into it and just uh-huh. phase out the national anthem period. Yeah, I think that's – I know that in the, the NBA, uh, I know that the Dallas Mavericks tried to not play the national anthem before the game, and they actually were forced to play it. Uh, the league went back and said, you have to play the anthem. Do you, let me ask you a question. 
I and they should be forced to play the anthem. It, I was just going to ask you, know. do you think it's important? Like, I watch the Yankee games um, pretty regularly, and what I've noticed is in uh, after the, the, the seventh inning stretch between the seventh, top of seventh and bottom of the seventh, they play, the God, they play God Bless America, and, you know, I see all the players. looks like they all stand. They got the hand over their heart. They got the cap down. You know, I don't see anybody kind of protesting that, which I don't know if it's just a national anthem that's being protested, but – do you think it becomes a, there comes a point where they stop that they they that they try to stop playing the anthem or I, I kind of get this feeling that that the for for the national anthem people are out much outweigh the against national anthem people. Listen, I don't think that they should ever stop playing it. Okay, okay, I think that it should be played before every game. I agree. You're asking for two minutes, if that, uh, of attention. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. The reason I, I mean, we listen, we, we've said this a thousand times and we'll say it another thousand times before we're done. All right. Half the reason that they're allowed to play that game is yeah. because of the people that stood for that anthem years ago. Yeah. And the reason that anthem was written years ago. So, I mean, are you ever going to come to a, 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 a level where you're going to make everybody happy? Definitely not. No. Definitely not. Yeah. You know, uh, I it's it's sickening. It's sickening. That's all I could tell you. Yeah, no, I I get it. I get it, guys. I I get it. It's uh, and and I believe they're going to continue with the social justice messaging. I I was hoping that most of that was going away, but it doesn't seem they took a beating in the ratings. I know, like the NBA ratings were down. They were up from last year, but they were still down. I believe thirty three percent for the for the championship games. So I mean that's got to be a wake up call to the NBA, which again did 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 away with most of the social justice messaging this year. I wonder if the NBA, if the NFL gets gets going on this, um, if they'll if they'll back off after you know if they continue to lose um, ratings this year. I mean they got they they didn't do real well last year when people were stuck in their house, Jeff, with nothing to do but watch football. No, I, I listen, I I know, but you know what, I bet you that. A lot of that's going to uh, be the same way this year too. You know, it's it's only a matter of time. But like you know, just like myself, a lot of other people are going to start getting into college football yeah. and alternatives. Yes, you know, the CFL and when the XFL starts coming back, so there'll be the game of football to watch. Just yeah. you're not going to watch the NFL. But, yeah, I would uh, say I'm much more excited about college football right now. I mean, I'm looking forward to the NFL because it's a very big part of the show, and I'm hoping you get. Little, even a little bit more into college football this year, because I would love to start bringing more college football in into the into the mix. Um, you know what it is? It's it, watching college football is so hard. Why? Because there's so many different. You don't know what games. I mean, listen, there's certain games you know that you have to watch. Right. They're usually the stadiums with eighty thousand people. Okay. Then right. there's some college games that are really good, and they look like they're played on a high school field. Correct. Absolutely. Now, when the guy scores a touchdown, he runs through the doors into the gym and goes to the bathroom. He comes back out on the field. You know, it's like because they're these small schools. Yes. That Which make Wagner look like fucking Penn State. You know, it's, it's very true. Listen, it's very true. But I, I would say this: the eight o'clock game on Saturday night is usually the best game of the day. Usually, now you you know sometimes you get some some good games. The, you know, the the three thirties and then the eight o'clock game are usually the better games. Um, but I, like I said, I'll turn the game on at twelve o'clock and watch, you know, Army and Syracuse play, or you know, well, listen, uh, you got to remember, there's two, four, five, seven, yeah, and sometimes eleven or, mm -hmm. or nine have games. Yep. Then there's how many different cable stations oh, have games? Absolutely. Then there's games at twelve, one, three, four. Oh, I would six, bet you. Do you eight. have an option to see at least twenty? On my system, I probably have an option to watch twenty games on a Saturday. I uh, probably, probably I would say that, I mean, right to the Pac-10 game at 10 o'clock at night. And I will some Saturdays when my wife's working, I will sit there from nine in the morning watching the, the, the uh, college game day, which I love to watch right through the last game of the day. And I'll bounce back and forth between games. I'll usually zero in on one. And, you know, every week there's a storyline and it's, there's usually a game with either a rivalry game or a big division game. And those are the games I kind of like to watch. And, and again, I have like four or five teams I root for. So, but but I enjoy the game even more. Of course, but there's just so many different games and options. And and you know sometimes when you're watching a game, 
and, and you say, okay, this this game's not so good, and then you could go on to a smaller game, you know, yeah, and then be like, wow, this game yeah. is really good. I, I hate when you're watching a game and then all of a sudden one of these guys takes their helmet off and he looks like he's in eighth grade. Oh, <laughs> and, and you're like, man, holy shit, I can't be watching this. this <laughs> Did you see the Alabama quarterback? He's 19 years old. He's already a millionaire. Already got a million dollars worth of endorsement deals. Yeah. Hasn't he hasn't even yet. played yet. Yeah, is that crazy or what? How about the other kid? What what fucking school was he from? I forget where he was where he's in school. Uh bottom line is is that he's he said that he won't do anything for any less than ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand really? dollars an hour. Yeah, I forget what school it was. Uh and it wasn't Duke. They had like a blue and white uniform he was wearing. Uh huh. Um, maybe Miami. No, Miami's not blue and white. Well, then, for whatever Miami University or whatever is down there. Uh, the Gators, Florida Gators. Okay. Maybe it was the Florida it Gators. Be, could be, but I mean, yeah. And he and he said that you know, like he doesn't know what's going to happen. He doesn't want to burn bridges. This and the other thing. I won't do anything for less than ten thousand dollars an hour. Oh wow! I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Who are you? You 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 don't you don't even play in the NFL. Uh, yeah, and you so you're you're extorting people for you're a college football player. <laughs> yeah, so many good. lands on you the wrong way. That's it. That's yeah, it. It's but, over. It's yeah, over. again, it's it's crazy. But you know what, Jeff? I mean, you give. I I agree with this system of if a kid can make money off his name, or if this if the school's making money off the, the guy's likeness image, I believe that the team. The kids should benefit from it. I don't think they should get paid to play. So that, you know, they're already getting, you know, $150,000, $200,000 worth of education for free, depending on how long they stay. But do I think they should get allowed to make money off their name, sign autographs, do endorsement deals? Yeah, why not? I mean, uh, it's, it, you know, they're, they're contributing to a multi billion dollar business. How about this? How about the player that's, you know, not a sure thing? You know, he's a little bit based. Of course, he's like a better than a middle of the road type of player. But, uh, you know, he's got to do some work. Instead of getting to the NFL, maybe leaving in his junior year, now you're going to keep this guy for four years. Yeah. Because if he's getting paid, he's going to be like, well, if I could go to the NFL and get cut after, you know, training camp and never make a dime, I'm not going to lose out on any of this money that I could make while in college. Yeah. So, you know, in the long run, it may you're going to watch something will happen because – it's going to end up hurting some of the NFL teams. Um, I think. Well, you know what, Jeff? I, I, you know, I, I I would agree with that. Well, here's what I think. Do what happens is I think the middle of the road guy or the kid who's a bigger college star isn't going to come out after two years or three years. They may stay the full four, figuring that they're going to get you know NFL minimums and not you know. I, I so I think you might actually get better pro football. Because you'll have kids who stay longer in college and make the big money. The, the Trevor Lawrence's of the world or the Saquon Barkers of the world who are superstars, they're going to leave when they're ready to leave. But the next guy, you know, especially kids maybe who are offensive linemen, you know, maybe defensive linemen, uh, may stay a little longer and you might get a better product in the NFL. You might, you might, but these guys may end up. Uh trying to make more money while in college and not worried so much about yeah, what they're yeah. going to make in the NFL. Yeah, Listen, if you know that you're going to be a fourth round pick, fifth round pick, yeah, and maybe you go into the NFL and, and, and you somehow catch lightning in a bottle and turn, turn it around and become the, you know, greatest left tackle ever, you know, which happens once yeah. in a blue moon, but now maybe these guys are going to waste their time in, in college and, and really milk it before they get out there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Listen, and uh, Bob, I'm just dealing with Bobby. He's he seems he's saying that he can't. He's trying to click the link, and it won't. It's not taking to the studio. I I don't know what uh, could be the problem. I'm not sure. So I'm going to try to email it to him in a second if I can. So guys, hang in there a minute. I'm just trying to work my magic while I do the show and <laughs> do sometimes. Um, there was some magic work today, wasn't there, Tom? Uh, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about, Jeffrey. What do you? What do you? What? What, what is the, this magic you speak of? I sent you a picture of it earlier. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably the first. <laughs> probably the first time you almost got banned from the show. <laughs> um, uh, let's see if I can drag this over. Oh, come on, let's just. 
Bobby uh, Gus at Yahoo.com. That's a weird one. Let's go. Just give me a second there, Jeffy. Bobby Gus. Gus at Yahoo.com. Pink. And send. Okay, hold on a second. We just respond to Bobby. Uh, check. No. See if that works. If not, I don't know how to get him on at this point. So, how, what is the problem? How could he? <laughs> the link is not good. I don't know. I, I gave him the same link you did that, that I gave you, and you you popped up right away. He says it's not. When you click it, you come right to the studio, right? I've never done yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So he's saying it's not taking. But you know what? Well, There's been times where you've given me send if you could send him a different link because there's times where you've emailed me one link uh -huh. and then I got thrown off or I couldn't find it and then he emailed me a second link and it was the link to come to this studio but it was like written out differently and everything yeah, so maybe the, maybe the one that he has uh, you can't use the same link twice I is that know. it I just emailed it to him the same link I sent you and he said it's it's there not doing anything. Yeah, mine went went right on. Went straight through, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know what else to do. I, I'm not sure how else to 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 help it. Uh try one more thing. Um you may also share instruction. You can have up to ten people. Uh I'll try one more time. Uh just email it. Okay. okay, let's try this. Uh Bobby. Oh, my underscore underscore Gus at E. Mm -hmm. And let's see if this one works. If this doesn't work, Jeff, I don't know what to do. I don't know what your man looks like, so I have no idea. Yeah, I, one of these days, you gotta, you got to take the controls. Uh just I'm trying to try. I just sent you another email. Try this. If not, I don't. I can get him. I can try to get him on the phone. Want to do him? I can do it on the phone. Well, uh, listen, that's up to him. Uh, I mean, you know, I'd rather get him on the. Uh, we have technology now. He should. He should be able to take advantage yeah, of it. I think Bobby. I also definitely. noticed that nobody's uh texted for a while on the show there he is he's there now jeff uh, let's get let's get our yeah i, I will I see a bunch of people i i have a, a thing on my screen jeff that shows me uh some of the people list you know it gives me an idea who's watching how many people uh, are, are watching us at this point but uh i see bobby's handsome face he, he, you know jeff not only is he an amazing guitar player you know he's in this new band violence it's not a new band but he's a new member of the band he rescues turtles on the side i saw him rescuing turtles you know, and and I'm hoping he's gonna come on and set you straight because I'm a little tired of you blasting my giants. You know what? Listen to me before you go any further. Go all right, if you if figures you can't do the job on your own, so you got to get somebody else on it. I, I, yeah, listen, that's what the problem is. With big you. blue, we stick together. The problem with you, big fucking nothing. We stick together. So without further ado, let's bring on for the first time face to face for about the twentieth time on the show. Uh, our, our I must say our good friend Bobby Gustafson. Hey, Bobby. What's up, guys? There you What's are. Up, man? <laughs> Bobby, I got to tell you, I love your room, Bobby. That's it. I love your room. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Bobby. That's what I'm talking about. There's no green in there. No. <laughs> <laughs> so set my, before we get to, 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 the, to the new band and all the stuff that you're doing, set my boy straight. Every day he sends me, your GM sucks, Saquon's a bust. Jones can't play. The Giants suck. And he's coming from a guy whose team hasn't won anything since Super Bowl trophies. No, I didn't say win. my team was going to win anything, though. No. I oh, never said anything good. about the Jets. You're making fun of my team. Bobby, do me a favor. Give me a minute. Just defend me a little bit. It, it must be a real shitty feeling <laughs> to never win anything. It's true. Year in, year out, all you do is bitch about how your team can't amount to anything. It sucks. We got four Super Bowls. We got one. 
Yeah, and that one's made of wood. That trophy was made of wood. That's for old. <laughs> so, hey, Bobby, how you doing, man? How you been? Good. <laughs> so we got we got a lot of stuff going on beside uh, beside rescuing turtles and rooting for the giants. I, I know you got uh, you got some uh, new uh, the new band. You're working with the new band now. How's how's that working out? How'd you get how'd you get involved? Um. Well, I, I I knew Perry from years ago. Um, he, you know, violence was on Megaforce like towards the end of their career, and um, you know Billy Milano from 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 SOD MOD. Um, we actually went out to California years ago to go play with with Perry Strickland, the drummer. So we became friends, kind of you know stayed friends for uh, all these years, and it just happened to be about two two years ago, August. That you know, they were like, well, you know, we don't think our guitar player is working out. Would you be interested? I said, yeah, of course. I mean, the the, uh, the Taint stuff just came out, too. But mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, you guys are, are great. I mean, you know, one iconic thrash band. I said, yeah, of course. I said, you know, I'd be interested. So, you know, of course, you know, got things going, started learning the songs. And, and then all of a sudden, by January, uh, you know, six months later, the pandemic hit, so mm. it's it's just been like a, a steady nothing for a year and a half, other than making the EP, <clears throat> right? Which which isn't coming out till uh, till sometime early in twenty two, right? That's uh, let the world burn. That's yeah, the EP. Um, uh, Metal Blade. Yeah, they wanted to wait till twenty twenty two. We uh, <laughs> we got it mixed. It's getting mastered. We're working on some pictures now, and they said, you know, it's better just to let all this, you know, shit blow over and come out early in the year. Mm -hmm. This way, you know, we're short of what we thought everything would be over by then. So that's kind of what, 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 ha what happens if it's not over by that time? Are, are you still going to let it loose with the EP or what? We're going to have to. Yeah. I mean, we can't, can't hold on to it forever. So, uh, Mm. It's just it's 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 just such a strange thing to, to not be able to tour, not be able to support anything. I support the Satan's Taint stuff, so mm -hmm. I kind of gave up on on just doing that for now. And then mm -hmm. here comes this, and 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 we're stuck <laughs> once again. So yeah, I mean, eventually bands have got to just release their music. It sucked for all the bands that released new music, you know, yeah. the beginning of <clears throat> last year. It just it's freaking killed everything. Yeah. Yeah, it, and, and it, and, yeah, and it's uh, just starting to loosen up now. And I'm starting to hear stuff about new mask mandates, and who knows what's gonna what's gonna happen. I know uh, we we about to talk about like the Foo Fighters are actually running around. They're gonna do concerts only for vaccinated people, which I think is kind of crazy. I, listen, did you I, hear? Did you hear they had to cancel a concert because one of them got fucking COVID? No, yeah, come I, think, on. I swear to God. I swear to God, I'm happy you brought that up. I wanted to uh, wait for you to bring it up again. So they had to cancel the show because they got COVID. Good, because Eric Eric Clapton went out and said that he's not he's not going to deal with that. Yep. You know this this vaccination card or yeah. Or anything like that. I can't really take it serious when you've got an open border and yeah. they've, count, they've counted at least a hundred countries that are pe people are coming into the United States from. They're yeah. not vaccinating them at the border. They're throwing them in buses and planes and putting them over the U.S. Yeah. So if you're so worried about COVID and you're making us Americans get the shot, why aren't these people coming through our borders getting a shot before they sure. come here? Sure. They should have... Yeah, no, again, yeah. listen, if you're going to go right, then they should, they should be lining up at the border getting the shot before they get you know, to, the, to the, everything else that they're going to fucking bring over. Never mind COVID. Everything else that they have that they're bringing into the country. The sicknesses and shit they have. Fentanyl, you got people coming in now from, from Haiti. Yeah. You, they're just throwing them in middle America and, and, and leaving them there. You know, what the hell? Well, yeah. Listen, I, listen. We, we can go on for two hours with this one because oh, yeah. I, think, I think we're we're on the same we're on the same page on this one. So we're we're, we're not we're not big fans of uh, of the current. But uh, you know, Bobby, you, I know you guys are going out. Is, is are you still going out in the fall? You guys, is it the? Hold on a second. The uh, in the fall for the 2021 MTV Headbangers Ball Tour is that the, the one that's going all over Sweden, Denmark, and all of that? Yeah, we were supposed to do that last November, December. 
so that like most of our shows got pushed back from last year. Mm-hmm. So they they basically just switched it to end of November, beginning of December. Um, the the England England shows and Ireland show got canceled, and we're we're taking that over to Sweden. So you know we're actually going to do two shows in Sweden. But um, yeah, that's that's a good little <clears throat> two week tour that we're that we're going to do, as well as make up all the other you know dates if if, if the venue is still around. A couple of them closed. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's you guys. You guys, artillery, exciter, voivod. Uh, you guys, yeah, pretty, voivod, voivod. That's it. Yeah, you guys. Are, that's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good show to run out, run around out there. That's that's that, that's got to be pretty fun for you. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I mean, I, you know, I haven't been in in, in Europe and, and Germany touring in, in a long time, so it's just great to be able to go back. But uh, you know, think and, and then now with you know Alcatraz and. And Bloodstock, um, we're not sure if Bloodstock is going to happen now, but Alcatraz supposedly is still happening. Mm-hmm. I finally get to play those big outdoor festivals that I always wanted to do. So, you know, hopefully this just keeps it keeps opening up where you know these bands can play. They're 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 killing <clears throat> way more industry than than just the music industry. Yeah. Oh they, yeah. The, everything yeah. involved with the show. Sure. Every whether whether it's the bands, the you know the their techs, the, the the behind the scenes people, you know the people selling beer and popcorn in the in the in the stadiums and yeah. in the arenas. So every everybody's taking a beat enough for it. Again, that's Bobby Gustafson. He's with me and Jeff. We're talking a little bit about uh, his new band, his new band, uh, Violence. Uh, their upcoming tours, their new EP coming out sometime next year, Metal Blade. Uh, Let the world burn. Uh, I, I I highly recommend. It. I heard the uh, the cover, the, the Dead Kennedys cover. Where where'd that come from? Um, we just like Metal Blade suggested that you know maybe we just do something for fun just to keep right because back in that was last July that I was out there and uh you know we didn't know how long this this was gonna last right so they, you know, why don't you guys just do something and you know we'll give you some money for a video you know pick a song do whatever you want to do mm-hmm. and have fun with it so that's you know I it was either Sean or or, or uh, Phil who picked that song and they're like yeah let's you know let's just do that we'll do a cover. We snuck into Phil's bar, which has been was closed at the time. They, you know, you couldn't even open up. You know, yeah. serve people. Um, we snuck in there and did the video. Grabbed a couple of friends, came in, and just had just had a fun time with it. I mean, it was, you know, nothing special. We weren't trying to make any sort of statement. We just needed to, uh, you know, keep keep the wheels greased, you know, until this thing was figured out, and and then you know, we can get back on tour again. <laughs> Well, let me ask you, uh, when you were with Overkill, you were writing your own music, and then when you were with Satan's Taint, you were writing your own music. Now you're with another band that has their own established music. Do you feel as though that you're almost like in a cover band playing violence covers when you're used to writing your own stuff? Yeah, it's, it's weird for me because it was one thing I was really always against, and that's kind of what I took Overkill out of because they were a cover band when they first started. I just said, you know, we're not going to go anywhere playing covers we need to write our own music but um i i couldn't think of a better band and a better album especially with eternal nightmare to to be playing those songs with such an iconic you know first and second album from violence it it's it's a little different for me it's like yeah because i'm always used to play on my own stuff yeah. but um i'm actually in, in, enjoying it i mean it's 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 great because those guys are are at that same professional level mm-hmm. where they they're they're at it all the time. I mean, they're taking care of things, they're writing stuff, you know, you know, Sean's booking flights and taking us here there. I mean, some, you know, kind of semi self-managed. So it's it's nice to have guys that are working at your level. And that's the way it is right now. So, yeah, I mean, we got we've got the EP coming out, so eventually the more we're together, the more recent, recent songs will probably be added to the set. Right. So the more stuff we work together, you know, I'll I'll feel like I'll be a little bit more a part of. Right. But now when you when you play the old stuff, uh, you, I, I'm assuming they give you some room to kind of like you know make it your your you know put your uh, your 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 style to it, your you know your name to it. So that that's got to be good. Or or is it more rigid and you kind of got to follow note for notes? No, Phil, Phil, Phil's great. He says, you know, 
you know, figure out the solos as close as you want and, and, and do your own thing. So, you know, for, for some of the old stuff, you know, they kind of fit the songs and that's what I always kind of like to do with, with, yeah. with my stuff is make the solo fit the song and those solos fit. So I really kept them, you know, 90% close to what, what was there. Right. And, uh, you know, with the new stuff, I did my own solos. So I kind of was able to get, you know, my foot in the door with uh, the, the new material. They're, they're very, like, laid back band. Very, like, yeah, let's just have fun with this. And that's that's kind of what I wanted to do with, with, with the Taint was just right. to have, have fun playing again, you know. And, and, and they're like 100%. Let's Let me ask you this, Bobby. Is this more of violence has the chance to play with Bobby Gustafson or Bobby Gustafson has the chance to play with violence? <laughs> um, well, considering that, you know, I didn't really do anything for a long time. Uh, you know, it's kind of it's it's kind of mutual. Phil obviously has had the best career out of all of us. Um, you know, they have some, you know, little things going here and there, but it's just it's a mutual respect i mean they know what they did and then uh, you know they know what i did and just being being yeah. together is just okay that makes it even better yeah but you know what you you've been out of it for a long time no offense and you're still a relevant figure in the music world today 30 years since the last time you were on something that says something about you as the player and and, and the musician that you are i mean that's how i look at it yeah, I mean, you know, they. I'm sure that they obviously they they realize that, and it's you know it's better to grab someone who's got a following, sure, into the band than than an unknown. Yeah. And uh, there's just a level of you know professional, but we're all we're all closer in the same age. We've come up through the same, uh, you know, time period musically, and and uh, it's it's just mutual. I mean, I've tried other other projects that haven't made it and you know so have everyone else but you know you know phil has been the one who's been out there you know playing the most yeah. mm -hmm. uh you know even even harry played with uh exodus i think when tom wasn't there or something happened at one point so you know everyone's been out there and it's 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 just part of that big 80s metal family that we still have no, absolutely. And Bob, how was was the, was the transition for you though in the recording process? You know, the last couple of things you've done have been your own. So you know, you were the guy who had to you had to please. You know, now you're you're recording stuff and you and you're having not necessarily to please anybody, but now you're not really the final say on what ends up on the album. Was that a transition for you to kind of you know take a little direction maybe from others when it was necessary? That, that's a really hard thing for me to do because yeah usually what I would I write something it's 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 all me and I'm, and I'm the only one I have to make happy correct but yeah it goes it goes back to even when I started to play with Billy Milano and then even Dave Lombardo it was just a weird thing to have to write something and think <clears throat> is this other person gonna like it is it gonna fit <clears throat> right. That's kind of what we're doing now, because I, I mean, I just I riff all the time, so I'm always recording stuff. Mm. And to me, it's like, okay, I'm just gonna pick the stuff that now fits violence. Right. I mean, I'll I'll write a, a doomy riff, riff from like Sabbath to you know everything in between. And it's like, all right, well, Sabbathy riffs aren't what violence is about. So I'm gonna go through everything that I have charted, mm -hmm. you know, the years and say, okay what fits this band and then I'll work on it. So it's, 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 it's kind of nice to have something a little different like that, but it's yeah. strange at the same time. Yeah. Cause even going back to the overkill days, I mean, I'm, you know, just based on what I know, you know, and again, not being in, you know, in the band or, or back to stage with the band or in the recording sessions, you know, it seems like it, it was kind of your vision of what was getting on the albums. Cause it changed completely when you left. So, to me, even during the overkill days, you were kind of still the, the driving force on what was being put out there. Yeah, mu uh, musically, uh, definitely, you know, being the only guitar player. Yeah. You know, I was writing the stuff and, and, and even like, uh, you know, some the song, the uh, song titles, some lyrics here and there, uh, the album titles, uh, all of Years of Decay, totally. And, uh, 
you know, that it was, it was, it was just definitely something that that uh, you know I was I was doing well, and each album yeah. got a little better. Mm-hmm. You know, we got better as a band, we got stronger, and then you know I guess people's feelings got wow. hurt. I mean, especially after the third album because Didi Didi had a few riffs on the third album. And I really didn't like some of the stuff on on that album. There's a lot of good stuff, but there's some riffs that to me were not overkill. And I just took the reins on the Years of Decay, and and I really switched what we were doing. So, uh, oh. yeah. yeah, yeah, Jeff, you had something. Yeah, Bobby, is there a riff or a song or, or anything that you wish that you could go back in time and take and bring to violence that you might have recorded with overkill? Um, yeah, I mean, they, they, uh, they seem to be right up there with the faster stuff, the thrashy stuff, you know, so anything from like shred to evil, never, uh, evil never dies uh, would fit with, you know, to me, what, what they're about. And it kind of would go in with, you know, the new stuff that Uh we have right now. Um, but to me, I, I. I always did a whole spectrum of thrash <clears throat> from the Sabbathy doomy stuff like Skull Crusher, you know, to the to the thrashy stuff like Shred. And then there's, you know, even the power metal stuff like Fear's Name. I mean, I was all over the board, but that's the way when I grew up, those were that's what I heard mm-hmm. from the yep. bands that I liked, like Priest and Maiden. Those albums covered everything. Mm-hmm. And that's what I you yeah. know, that's what that's what I envisioned for us as well. Oh, oh! Everybody's having a problem. Jeff, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I, I, you're, everybody I here. Everybody here, dude. Yeah, I don't know if it's my system is kind of crazy. Bobby's there. He's good, right, Bobby? You there? Yeah, I hear you. Guys. Okay. okay, so yeah, we're talking with Bobby Gustafson, Jeff, and I. You can stick around. We're gonna talk about Maiden in a few minutes. Their new singles out. Then we'll, t- we'll get Jeff's opinion, my opinion on it. We're gonna talk about my new underwear. We haven't had a chance to talk about my new underwear yet. It's very important to get this on the air tonight, Jeff. So we're talking, talking about, Listen. Is, is that a brown stripe on that right. fucking thing? It's a new underwear. It's got a pocket for the boys. Oh, come on. And, and it's got it's got a, a hole for the Schwantz. Look, the Schwantz goes right in. We're going to talk about how these fit and how much I didn't like it. So we'll talk about the underwear after Bobby. I don't want to hold up a superstar like Bobby with my underwear stuff, but he got, probably got, wants to poke his eyes out, make sure he doesn't pick up any sharp objects. Just for the record, yeah. these, <laughs> just for the record, these have not been worn yet. These, that's I did not go with one of the worn pair. I went with the unworn pair. So just for the record, Bobby. <laughs> listen, listen, it's a slow Thursday. I can bring up something. We got to kill some time here. Oh so, my god! I'm pretty sure we're going to be restricting my guitar on here if oh, we, we don't oh. keep it up. So anyway, let's get. Let's, let's, listen, let's I got one more for Bobby. Yeah, I got to yeah. ask him this. Bobby, uh, for years you played Gibson guitars, and and everybody knows that. Now you look like you're affiliated with Dean, yeah. that Blue Explorer that you posted pictures of the other day, or last week, or yep. beautiful guitar. How did you end up getting affiliated with Dean after all these years with Gibson? Uh, about two years ago, I was on vacation. Actually, it was weird. I was in uh, St. Augustine. I took me and the the, the Pipples up to St. Augustine because I haven't been up there yet. And I, I got a friend request from a guy named Chris Canella. So like, all right, let me see who he is. Blah blah blah. I'm looking at it. And it's like, oh, okay. He works at Dean. You know, he seems like it's not a fake account. So I, I, okayed it. I was like, okay. And then we talked a little bit. He's like, oh, you know, I'm a big fan. And I was like, yeah, fucking cool. And uh, he's like, well, what, what are you doing now? I says, I'm, I'm actually up in St. Augustine. He's like, well, we're in Tampa. He says, you want to come by tomorrow and check out. The warehouse. I was like, "Yeah, sure." I'm on vacation. I said, "Yeah, I'll drive by." So I drove all the way over there a couple hours. I thought it was closer than it was. I drove all the way over to Tampa, and he <laughs> met me at at the warehouse. And uh, he's like, "Yeah, man." He's like, "Let me walk you around, show you all the stuff." And and he goes, "You know, maybe we'll we'll work something out." I had an extra CD with me. I gave him a CD, and uh, we just we stayed friends back and forth. And then. It <laughs> You know, it came about a couple months later that 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 violence came into the picture. So I was like, okay, well, you know, now I got something that's you know really gonna take off. And I kept kept in contact with him, and uh, he, they sent me 
the flying V first. And it was, just, it was awesome. I'm like, the neck was perfect. They have a select, um, neck on that. And I'm like, this, this thing feels great. And then from there I kept talking and, um, they gave me the, uh, the black Explorer, but with violence, I have to use the, the tremolo bar a lot. So I said, I need another guitar with the tremolo system because we're going <laughs> to go to Europe because God forbid you break a string on a, on a tremolo system. You can't change the string in time to get back out on stage. So I said, you know, I need another guitar that I can grab. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always saw that, that ocean burst, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. And I said, well, I said, I need another guitar. What he got? And he showed me the ML, which is, you know, basically dime <laughs> most infamous shape and mm -hmm. then showed me the, the the blue explorer and i said that's that's exactly what i've been waiting for so i'm gonna i'm gonna take that so they threw on the emg pickups i used they threw on the the german floyd rose I actually just arrived today in california because i shipped them out there mm -hmm. for us to uh, start jamming and uh it's just one of those things it's like okay well you know, came around. I have the Gibson endorsement for life, supposedly, <laughs> but I really, you know, I, I just tried other guitars, you know, other than mm. that. Because they, they kind of faltered for, for a long time. I don't know how, how good they are now, but I tried other stuff. And the Dean was just, that neck was exactly what I was looking for. It was even better than the Schecter. I don't even play the Schecter anymore. So, uh, that, I mean, that, that's, all, that's how it all came about, really, just from Facebook. Nice. Yeah. nice. The power of Facebook for, for good for a change. Not the, huh? the the power of Facebook for good for a change. Yeah. yeah. Not not the uh the the uh the uh put you in the jailhouse for saying for saying tranny uh yeah. Facebook. <laughs> uh, again we're talking with Bobby Gustafson, him him and uh violence, his new band. They're gonna they got a new uh EP coming out next year, some touring dates. Bobby, so now I got a couple personal things I want to bring up with you. Before um, I do, but no, no, this is good stuff. Actually, you but, just remember he showed you a pair of his underwear, so be careful. It can't go any worse than the underwear, Bobby. <laughs> uh, Bob, Bob, um, so what happens next? So right now, you guys, you guys have the tour in in, in the fall. The album next year. What are you doing between now and and October or whatever it is? When you, I think it's October, you're, yeah, November. You're actually leaving. Um, I'm leaving. Uh, I'm leaving Florida for California on August first. Okay. And we're doing a show. They booked a, a quick show in Fresno just to warm us up. Oh, nice. Before we went to Europe. So we're, we're doing our first show as a band with me, the rest of the band, and, and Christian from, from uh, Fear Factory, the bass player. Um, that's going to be our first show with all of us together on August 6th. I'm staying out there. And then we're all flying to, um, to Europe together. So I guess we're going to fly. I think Phil is going out first because he's playing with Devin Townsend. And then we're going to meet up with him in, in Belgium and, and do Alcatraz. So we got the first two weeks um, with with all that. And then then the sporadic shows come into play where, where we're making up San Diego and L.A. the end of August. Then we've got uh, Portland, Seattle, the beginning of September. I believe there's a South American show. Wow. We've got Baltimore, uh, the, the Death Metal Fest. There's something up in in Canada, if they ever open. And then we'll be back um, on that Headbangers Ball Tour the end of November. Wow. So it's, a, so it's a busy end of summer, early fall for you guys. That's good to hear. And uh, uh, I, I think we're still making up the, the Japan, Australia, and New Zealand dates, which is what we were supposed to do last January before this right. all, because I was out there. We flew out there to go. Oh wow! The pandemic had happened within those two within those two weeks. Would uh, they lock? Would you lock just in a hotel room and and just uh, had to hang out and wait to decide whether we were playing or not? We got lucky because because for some reason me and the drummer from Sacred Reich didn't get the paperwork back that was supposed to be done. So. <laughs> We wound up, we we couldn't fly till we figured that out yet, and mm -hmm. then Japan canceled, and then Australia canceled right after that. So we we were like ready to go, mm -hmm. but we would have gotten stuck over there. Oh wow, wow! So good for you. 
Yeah, so luckily we didn't go. They tried to push the dates back a few months because that's all we thought was going to last. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they just pushed them to this, I think, October. So we should be doing those in October. Nice. That's good to hear. Yeah. That's good to hear, Bob. I'm glad, I'm glad for you. You know, I'm, I'm glad you're staying busy and with all this. And by the way, so I have a buddy of mine who's on the who's on here, and he's telling me to make sure he's got a cousin who's got a band in Florida called Werewolves. Have you ever heard of them? Werewolves scare me. <laughs> well, they're not real werewolves, Bob, but they oh. the band is werewolves. <laughs> uh, I've heard them. They're actually very talented. Uh, the singer's voice, I don't know sometimes, but very talented music. They're down your way in, in Florida. So uh, get, if you get a chance, take a, take a listen to Werewolves. Yeah, if I uh, see them playing somewhere, I'll go check it out. There you go. Now, speaking of that, I'm actually, I'm going to Florida. I'm, I'm, I've been looking to buy a house in Florida. I'm going out. I tried the Tampa Clearwater area. Couldn't find out that I liked. I'm actually heading out to Fort Myers, that area. You got any recommendations of places I should be looking for to, to buy a house? That whole that whole West Coast area is is really nice. I just went there a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, my parent my parents basically bought property on that side mm -hmm. of Florida years ago, like early sixties or whatever. It never wow. developed. And uh, you know now my dad's gone. My mom is 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 uh, you know kind of up there now. So we're not going to do anything with that property. We're going to sell it. It's like that whole Port Charlotte, uh, Newport Ritchie area. Okay. And it's still kind of old, old Florida ish. Oh yeah, over there. Yeah, it's, it didn't. It's not as built up as the east mm -hmm. coast, coast of Florida. But I tell you what, anywhere down here, I mean, I've never been more proud of of the state since I moved down here. Mm -hmm. You know, twenty four years ago, it's 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 great. Anywhere oh, I love. Oh, you'll be happy. Yeah, I, I just said we, my wife and I went on a vacation. We went to Tampa. We we, we were hanging out in uh, Clearwater a lot. I loved I loved Clearwater. I had a great time there. Yeah, but I've uh, been there too. Clearwater. Yeah, so now we're looking to, to head down that way. Uh, uh, Lehigh. Yeah. That, that's uh, I guess there's a whole bunch of little quick Cape Coral, all that stuff. Uh, Naples is over. Yes, there. Naples is very very big and anywhere over there. It's still, I mean, it didn't really even develop in the past 50, 50 years. I mean, that's still just a piece of property with with trees overgrown on it so it's still that old old style florida over there so you, yeah you'll be happy and plus yeah. you can get to the east coast in an hour hour and a half how, how far am i from fort lauderdale i want to where's where's nico mcbrain and nico's uh rib joint is that in fort lauderdale yeah it's it's north of fort lauderdale like the uh coral springs area i guess would be the biggest name it's just kind of a little bit west by Parkland, but uh, yeah, you can jump on seventy five, go across Alligator Alley, and and you're right over there. Okay, yeah, I'm going to be I'm heading down to uh, Florida on Monday. I'll be there next week, so looking forward to doing a little traveling, a little uh, little hanging out, and and just relaxing a little bit. That, but searching for searching for a future home down there. That that's great. I mean, there's there's been a steady flux of of, of New Yorkers down here. That's what I always tell everybody. I said oh. we're like. The sixth borough down here. I hope. I just hope they don't bring none of the liberal New Yorkers down there, and they change Florida to a liberal state. That's no. that's what I'm afraid of. That's that's not going to happen. We won't <laughs> let that happen. <laughs> there you go. So, Bob, listen, man. I, I want to thank you very much for, for giving us uh, 40 minutes of, of your time, and we'd love oh, talking oh, to you. It's, 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 a, it's a blast, right, Jeff? Yeah, I can't even believe that from, uh, much time went by so far, man. That was cool. And Bobby, I'm, I'm mailing you the underwear. Uh, I, want, I want a Bobby signature. I want a Bobby Gustafson signature on my underwear. Lucky you, man. It's wow. not starting to grow. It's not like starting to grow thong, but it's almost as good. It's, it's fake got a pocket news. for the boys. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bobby, listen. Good luck with the uh, with the new band. Good luck with the tour, the album. Don't be a stranger. And uh, listen, listen uh, we wish you the best. You're a great guy. Thank you very much for coming on. Thanks, guys. Hit me up when you come down here. I, absolutely. I'll, I'll ring you up when I'm down there next week. Sounds good. Take care, Bobby. Good seeing hey. you. Later, man. Take Big blue, blue, Bobby. Big blue. <laughs> Big blue. There you go. Bobby <laughs> <Justice> everybody. <laughs> He's a good guy. It's a good interview, Jeff. Yes, it was, man. That that actually ran pretty smooth. Yes. When, when we're, put those away, please. No, we got to talk about this. We're talking about the underwear. underwear. We're talking uh, about these underwear. Bobby Gunson uh, talked about my underwear, Jeff. It's a big thing. Oh, uh, God. God. No. Listen, real quick. God. I, we shouldn't do this while we're on the air. 
So oh, put the underwear the, away. Okay? The, underwear, the underwear over here. Right. Good. No, 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 no. Further on the other side of the room. Throw them on your mother-in-law, man. <laughs> that, was a, that was definitely a very informative interview, man. Very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of fun, that interview, man. Yes, when, we're, when we're able to talk mm -hmm. and we're not tripping over one another, it runs so smooth. Well, yeah, because the old days, you know, I couldn't tell when you had something. You couldn't tell when I had something. Now we're kind of conversing off the air a little bit. It's easy. And yeah. I can actually read your, your, I can actually read your face and know when you're ready to say something. So, yeah, was, no, like definitely. But I mean, it was what our questions led into one another's questions. Absolutely, and was good, man. It really was good. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Good job. And uh, you know, listen, Bobby's an easy guy to talk to. You know, you know, it's hard for me sometimes because, you know, I hold Bobby in a very high regard because, to me, while I'm not a huge Overkill fan, I understand that their place in in the in the thrash world is is. Pretty big from you know where, where it all started, so I, I kind of put Bobby up there. But he's to me, he's a regular guy, and I, I consider him, a, you know, I want to say a friend, but friendly with the guy. Yeah, no, listen, the guy's definitely guy's cool. You know, yeah. what I mean, and uh, he's easy to talk to and everything. And and I, I mean, I remember <laughs> seeing him in school in high school in New York. Yeah. I remember seeing him at Lamore several times. And uh, I mean, listen, we probably could have kept them here all day. Oh yeah, asking no, them no, questions, no. but uh, I, I got my main questions answered. Mm -hmm. The only thing I you didn't know, so up, I, wanted to bring up, I wanted to bring up the Didi Verney, the new the new music from Didi oh, Verney. Oh, fuck me! I yeah. forgot. I Didi. totally forgot. I have it written down too, and I just glanced away from it, and I forgot. I want to say, Bob, did you hear the Didi Verney new album? You, you want to know something? I'm kind of glad we did. Why? Because every time that we we end up talking to him. We end up bringing Overkill up one way or another. And I, and I don't want him to think that way. We, we, we've just bringing him on to talk about that. So no, you know what? Right. It's, it's nice that we, we concentrated on a new band. Yep. Uh, everything that's going on. He told us what happened throughout the pandemic. Uh, you know, how we end up going over there with uh, Dean guitars and everything. Yep. So it was a lot of fun. Man. I, was, I enjoyed that, it. That was a good pickup because I saw those guitars just before the show. And I meant to make a note for myself and talk to him about that because I, I'm not a huge fan of, of that guitar. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Dean guitars, but I did want to ask him about that. And I, and I didn't know that he was a big, you know, Gibson guy. I just didn't know. Yeah, I knew that. I'll be Tom. I gotta take a run over to the little boys' room real yeah, quick. Yeah, I'll, you I'll can talk right. about your underwear if you like. I'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. Well, thank you. Bobby's uh, comp uh, complimented us. And listen, Bobby. Uh, again, guys, we're here at Hard Rockets Watch. Jeff and Tom. Hanging in there doing our thing here on Thursday nights. We just had Bobby Gufferson on from Violence, uh, X Overkill. He's still, he still got the taint. And uh, it's a lot of fun to have Bobby on the show anytime. Uh, he's a blast. And uh, again, guys, we'll be here. We won't be here next Thursday. I'll be in Florida. But Jeff and I will be back on August 5th. We'll talk a lot of football. We'll kind of figure out uh, well, where we think this, this season's going to go. Uh, usually we're way off, but uh, we still have a lot of fun doing it. So we're glad you're hanging out here. Remember, also on the August 5th show, the guys from Barstools and Band Talk, Sean, Alex, and Dave, will be joining Jeff and I on that show for about a half hour or so before the football. I don't think they're big uh, football guys, uh, NFL guys, but uh, we'll talk to them a lot. A lot of stuff, a little sports, a lot of music, and a lot of what we're doing the show. So make sure you guys tune in for that. They will have a break next week. And, uh, again, uh, I'm looking forward to August 5th, and we can talk a lot of football and a little bit with our good friends from Barstools and Band Talk, Dave, Sean, and Alex, and uh, sit back and, and hang out. Uh, Tom, send the baby. I'm going to send he Bobby just sent us a message to say, Great show. Oh, cool, man. That's yeah. very cool. So I'll, uh, I'll send him back a message in a few minutes. Uh, Jeff, just for the record, our numbers in Israel are up again. We're nearly to, into the eights at no, this point. Yes. Way. The, nu the, numbers are, the numbers are rebounding. We must, uh, you know, Shlomo and and uh, and the boys are, uh, must be listening to us again. If these numbers keep going up, God. one of us is going to have to convert. Jeff, I think what should happen is this: if the number gets over ten, you wear the underwear on the show. No, I think that's what no. has to happen. No, the, no, I think, listen. I the, think the, the numbers would have to be so up. high. The numbers would have to be so high that see this spot. That I don't even go down the stairs next to this spot. Yeah, look so at the oh, oh. Long. That's what no, it's no, for. No, man. no, no. <laughs> Tommy's not. Oh, come on. That's terrible. That's what, that's and terrible. then the boys rest right in here. You rest the boys right in there, Jeff. So all that does is cut off the circulation to your fucking well, ding ding. Yeah, because you know, it pinches. And then what yes. it really does, 
it makes you sweat more, and the bag fills up with water. It's like it's like a, a, a it's like a, it's like a trough, like a door with that the horse would have to think. I'm telling you, you next thing you know, there's water pouring out of the of the little the nugget listen, holder. Listen, I'm gonna go. I'll get it. Uh, I'm gonna get into this once, real quick. Go ahead. All right, and then I'm I'm moving on. You I'm move moving on. on okay? You move on. I used to wear tidy whities Yeah, me too. Literally, literally whites. For okay? those. And then my wife said to me, you know, that's not really that sexy. I, I'm going to buy you underwear. So she bought me colored briefs. Okay. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. So she yeah. kept buying me colored briefs, colored briefs, colored briefs. So everything was fine, right? Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, you go to pull them up. Like, oh, that one ripped. Okay, get rid of that pair. Throw this pair out. Throw that Oh, this one ripped. Throw that out. Then I'm like, I, don't, I got no underwear left. I'm, I'm doing wash two <laughs> nights a week to see why I have underwear for the week. I said, I got to go to all the other underwears I have. All the white ones, and I can't wear the white ones no more. Yeah. So then she buys me them fucking box of briefs, which as soon as you put them on, they crush your bag mm -hmm. and pinch your bag. I hate them. I, and I can't, I actually called up Fruit of the Loom and I'm like, I want underwear for a fat guy that's not white. And they didn't want to hear anything. Right. And they were like, we don't make them. I'm like, well, what's the matter? I said, a fat <laughs> man's not supposed to get sexy here. I said, how am I supposed to turn on the missus if I got to wear white underwears? Right. Wait, wait for a brown stripe to develop in the back end? So like, wait, you know, the brown stripe will get so white that the other way turn brown. Exactly. Yeah. So they'll look rustic, right? Like earth tones or whatever. <laughs> so I had Fruit of the Loom tell me, like, listen, Chubbs, there's no call for fat guys like you with underwear <laughs> like this. So I, I don't know what to do. Like, I, I'm trying all these different kinds of underwears, and they, they suck. So... Thank you. No, I would never try those, man. I would never try those. I'm a, I'm a box of brief guy, and I love this material. I have a bunch of underwear now. In what this is it? That silky stuff? Yeah, it's kind of like a silky stuff. It lets you breathe oh, a little oh, bit. God. No, no, yeah. no, no, the no. Nuggets, no. The nuggets slide on it. Oh, 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 no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. But no. You, can't, you can't have, Jeff. You just listen. God no. did not intend for my Schwantz, and I, and I use Schwantz lightly. <laughs> To wind up in that hole right there. No, I'm sure it fits. <laughs> with, with room to spare. I got I to stuff it with newspaper. Oh, man, what the fuck? It looks like a worn-out box. I'm telling you. And then it's right, call mine when you need them. And then I'm trying to find the, the nugget holder. The nugget oh, holder. no, 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 no. You got to have the nugget holder, Jeff. Oh, God. <laughs> goes, now, what, brand, what brand are these fucking things? These are separate, separate tech. Separate tech? Yeah, these are like a generic. This, this, it's funny. I got these uh, two days ago, right? My, the, uh, Amazon shows up at the door. My wife bought these through Amazon, and uh, they show up at the door. And I go, I, uh, I, um, I come home from work, and they're on the bed. My wife goes, "Try them on. You're gonna love them." Blah, blah, blah. I put them on, and I'm not so sure. I go sit down, and a commercial comes on for the. I will say the non-generic, the real brand. I forget what who <laughs> makes it. And, and on the TV is a guy, a weird-looking guy in his underwear riding a mechanical bull and advertising that his nuggets are basically being held in the pocket. And I said, all right, this can't be good because I look like that guy on the TV. I can't wear these. So I've worn these two days in a row. This is the last clean pair. That's why I have them on the air. But I will no longer try any longer to, to – I'll wear the underwear. But my nuggets will not be placed in here and be strangled or collect water uh, for future use. Oh, future? Just, what are you? What, what happens? Get your shipwreck? You can drink your own fucking salty well, nut water? I, I I don't know, but you, you come out, you get in it, and it's soaking wet because the, the nuts are in the bag. It's double thing. Oh, it's you know, you're walking up and uh, I, I, I actually, I right now, I actually hear the people of Israel fucking crying and and leaving the show. I actually hear them right now. <laughs> they just jumped uh, the running wall. <laughs> my God! Well, I guess if Jeff, on this, I I got up this morning. I tell you, I spent about three minutes on the show this week, and I said I got to get some stuff to talk about. I said, I know what we're talking about the underwear. I don't like these underwear. So you got you got you got to you got to course on how I don't like my underwear, and it's on the show sheet. It's right here, my new underwear. It's on the show sheet. So, oh man. Uh, well, so now we Listen, talk about that's underwear. the problem when when you wear a specific kind of underwear for X amount of years, and and then you're forced to to switch styles or brands because every brand, don't forget, every brand is has got their own nuances too. They're not Absolutely. all the same. 
Absolutely. You know, there was one one brand I got. I was wearing my underwears one day, and I was like, something just doesn't feel right. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, I don't know what's going on, right? So I go in the bathroom to see what's going on. Right. And I'm like, lo and behold, I said, what are you doing out here? So you're supposed to be on the other side of the wall. And everything was out. And and the way that the fucking fly was, oh, it, it, it was like, it, it, oh, it was sorry. like a like a like a triangle. Mm-hmm. And as soon as you sat down, it just opened up and everything blah, just falls right out. I'm like, uh, what no the good. fuck is this? No good. My guy's gotta be snuggled, they gotta stay behind the wall. You have to stay yeah. the, you have to stay on the other side of the fence. That's the way it works. Listen, I just hit 55 the other day. Okay. Uh, I I, I, I'm, I'm in no danger of, of doing anything I shouldn't do, like get the old lady pregnant. Okay. Uh, That's not going to happen anymore. So we don't have to worry about that. Right. This is just for safety reasons. They need to be kept in one spot for safety reasons. Uh, for, yeah, we don't need no uh, incidents with zippers. Nope. We don't need any of this bullshit. Nope. They, you need to know they're behind the fence <laughs> exactly. all times, they're locked behind the doors, and they come out only when you request. That's it. That's how I, it works. I, I may. <clears throat> I may have yeah. to go back to the whiteys. Really? I may have to. I'm telling you, go box of briefs. Go I have box of briefs, man. I got a pair of box of briefs. You gotta go, you gotta go to Walmart. I buy my underwear at Walmart. And I'm telling you, go to the silky ones. They're the Look, best. I got a fucking box of briefs. Are they silky? No. No, gotta go to the silky either. ones, man. They're nice. Cotton. The cotton ones, they they they, they kind of they kind of like swell your balls. It's, it's just they don't let no air. The silky ones, they feel so nice. Your butt feels nice. You rub it in there. Oh, it's the best. Best. I seen a box of the silky ones. They were like yeah. fucking three pairs for thirty dollars. Oh yeah, it's a little expensive, but it's well. This is worth. how I know that I, I have ties to Israel. You do because my wife said just buy them, and I'm like, no fucking way. I'm not spending thirty dollars on underwear. What the fuck just spend seven hundred dollars on another base. <laughs> Funny you should mention that. Funny you should tell me that. Funny you should mention that. Yeah. I, I took a base today. Yeah. To, to to work something out. You did. Yeah. Yeah. I should note by by Monday what's going to happen here. But I brought a base work something back. out you talk, to to sell a, a base to fix up. I mean, what? Well, no. I have enough bases. I don't need anything fixed up. Uh, I'm bringing a base. I'm bringing a base that I bought at the start of the pandemic. Okay. I picked it up the day that they locked everything down. Uh, I brought it back to the store that I bought it from. Uh-huh. And I was like, listen, I says, what could we do here? I says, well, I would like to maybe try to sell it. I says, but I know that you got to make a little something. I was like, so, you know, but I, I can't just let it go for, for nothing. You know, you know what I paid for and everything else. Right. So the guy said, you know, let me let me crunch some numbers and let me see which works best. And then I'll let you know. He goes, maybe I'll just buy it from you and then I'll sell it. And, or maybe I'll put it on reverb and sell it that way. He goes, I'll let you know. So I'm like, okay, no problem. So now I'm thinking, I'm like, what do I do? It's like I, I feel kind of like almost like crackheadish. I'm like going there, like, where's my money, man? You know, but because I don't, I don't want to do. I don't selling it because I don't. I need the money. I'm selling it because they just don't touch the base. Right. It's just, it's just sitting there. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. gotten to the time where uh, I'm. I, I have a hard enough time finding people to jam with. Yeah. You know, so it's like well, maybe I need to get rid of one or two and just liquidate a little bit. Yeah. Get a few things out of the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I started off with this and see see what happens. And then, of course, I go there and I look it up at the wall and I'm like, oh, I like that, I like that, I like that, I like that, you know? So who the fuck knows what's going to happen? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I, I was thinking about the other day. I I, I have uh, three guitars out right now. I have the white one. I just took off the wall. Actually, I have one, two. Yeah, three guitars out right now. I have the white one that's in the closet, uh, my V. And uh, my son has one of my guitars, my uh, my one guitar that's a uh, knockoff. It's the the... The, the gold Gibson uh, knockoff I haven't played in years. And I remembered that I got an acoustic that's in my closet that Giuseppe bought me. And I only played it once because I hate the color of it. I love the guitar, but I hate the color. It's like it's like a gray. And it just, it's just boring. And I said, you know what? I could sell this because I didn't buy it. What's your thoughts on selling a guitar that somebody else bought you and profiting from it? Well... It's not like you hang with him all anymore, right? When was the last time you actually spoke to him? I haven't spoken to him in over two years, I think it is. At least a year and a half. 
I think prior to the pandemic, every once in a while he pops up on the show. Well, like two weeks ago, he sent me a message on Facebook, and it took about an hour for me to respond. I said, "Hey, Giuseppe, how are you?" And he never. And to this point, he still hasn't responded. So that's that's my interaction with Giuseppe. I, I don't talk to him. I mean, he he like likes a picture here and there mm -hmm. once in a while. As far as Facebook goes, he he friend requests my wife, but he forgot to friend request me. You know, so <laughs> he friend requested me. I didn't accept it. Well, whatever you 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 do what you got to do with him. That that's up to you. But uh, depending on what kind of gu guitar it is, and it's a, what do you think you're gonna get? From? It's an electric ovation acoustic. I I take it for a fucking uh you know an evaluation. <laughs> so I would tell you, I had bought the same guitar, and I had bought an acoustic a while while back. I'm talking this guy be ten years ago. Maybe a little less, maybe man, about, about, about 10 years ago. I loved every minute of it. And I took it to the studio once when I was jamming with Giuseppe. <clears throat> and somehow my case opened up and the guitar fell out. And Ooh. shattered. Just oh, no. Shat yeah, un unfixable shattered. And I had paid close to 400 and change for the guitar. Well, so, <clears throat> I know that's, that that's what he, and it's the same one he got you? Same one, just different color. Well, I can tell you this much right now: you're not getting four hundred dollars for it. Oh, I, I wouldn't expect it, but I'm, you'd have I'm to just, you'd have to sell it on your own. Yeah, again, I'm just saying: is the, is it bad etiquette to take the guitar that somebody put, paid? And this is, I tell you, Jeff, it's in my closet. Minimum, minimum. Before I went to, before I went over to Parkside, it's got to be close to five years, maybe six. This guitar is sitting in my closet. If I played it twice, it's a lot. It's time. That's what I said. I said, well, I could sell it and then use it towards something else, but then I don't want to buy another guitar. What would I use yeah, it? Yeah, I, I don't want to tell you what I've been getting into lately. It's not good. No, no. <laughs> it's going to become a very expensive hobby. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Jeff and Tom talking here on Thursday night. Uh, and, and the best part is, is that, yeah. you know what? I recently ended up. Uh, there's a strong possibility that I'm going to have somebody pushing me in that direction too. So somebody I know. Yeah, yeah, you know my nephew. Oh, really? Yeah, you know I, I sometimes think like I went and I got different tires put on the truck and it looks cool. Oh, so now and you're then going I, to and I'm like, cars? what's that? You're going to su super up your car? A little bit, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. I, I'm thinking about like possibly buying uh, different rims. And I'm thinking, like, well, you know what? If I sell this truck, I could get the money from – I'm not the truck, the, the, the base. Yeah. I get the money from the base, plus my wife gave me some money for my birthday, which I haven't used yet, uh -huh. okay, because she got me some money. She says, here, get a tattoo. Uh -huh. And I'm like, well, you know, that, that's nice. It's a good idea, but I don't know what I want to get tattooed. And I really don't – not that I have plenty of room yeah. for things. Yeah but not really for what I wanted to get, you know, like I don't have an available space. So I, I don't know. I got to see. I, I, I couldn't end up having fucking rims. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. I, I tell you very, a very interesting thought. I mean, I guess that for me, I, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I, I been doing a little investing in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, my playing. I, uh, got into this, uh, guitar theory, uh, program. That I'm uh, learning uh, some new stuff. Uh, just started the videos the other day, and nice. uh, yeah, learning how to hold the pick the right way. Learning how to, you know, kind of some different uh, uh, fundamentals. Uh, looks like a pretty good series. So anyway, um, speaking of which, by the way, you have got a big show Saturday night, right? Is that the last of the the last time with Raul and uh, and that whole thing? Is this Saturday night? Yeah, I got to talk to you off the air on that one. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, it it is. At Mother Pugs. Yes. It was uh, tomorrow night. We practiced the night before the show. It was? No, no. We're going to practice tomorrow oh. night, the night before the show. Okay. And, and uh, I'll tell you more off the air, but all right. it was, uh, I don't I'm know exactly sure. how this is all going to work out. I, I hope it's good. I know a lot of songs now. Right. <clears throat> uh, not everybody else does, though. Oh, I got but you. I know a lot. Uh, 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 so the long and short of it, are you playing Saturday night? Is it going off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're oh, supposed okay. to, yeah. We're supposed to play. It's just a matter. Once tomorrow comes, we'll figure out exactly how many songs we're going to play. Gotcha. 
And then okay. I'm probably going to spend the better part of all day tomorrow and Saturday just going over shit. But uh, until yeah. tomorrow night and we go to practice, I don't know what to go over. Gotcha. So, uh, also, also, before I forget, the uh, good friend Johnny Collins is playing tomorrow night. And I'm trying to think of the venue. Do you know the venue off the top of your head? Johnny sent down a message. I believe, I believe it's Hot Shots. Yes, it is Hot Shots. So. Uh, tomorrow night, the, I don't know if it's a Johnny Collins band or Naked Jedi. I'm not sure which one it is. I think it's Johnny Collins band uh, is playing tomorrow night, 9 o'clock at Hot Shots. So if you're around, go see Johnny. I thought I might be able to go. I'm not sure I can. I got a lot of stuff to do tomorrow uh, for uh, for for uh, a little bit for work and then getting ready for my trip on Monday. So I, I'm up in the air if I can get out to Staten Island and see you or not. And then on, uh, I, I was just called on this, not yesterday. Might have been last night. Uh -huh. Last night or the night before? I think it was last night. Night before last. Uh -huh. All right. I can't give up too many details on it because details aren't uh, are sketchy at this point in time. Okay. But what? there will be a big show happening very uh -huh. soon. And uh, some old friends are, are getting back <laughs> together, last minute type of thing, uh, with a new twist. Old friends, new yeah. twist. Yeah. Guys yeah, we grew up with? No, 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 no. No, I, I wish it was I wish it was like that. Okay. Uh, like I said, I can't really give up. I now okay. I don't even know what name that it's going under. Okay. Nothing. But all I know is it's gonna be something where uh there's gonna be some new people involved and new songs and some stuff that we've never done before. But as soon as I know more, I'll let everybody else know more. All right, cool. Looking forward to in it. In case, in case something happens that it doesn't go through. All right, all right. Listen, when you're ready to uh, expand on that or expound on it or however you say it, uh, you let us know. And of course, I hope everybody goes out and sees Jeff play on Saturday night. And, uh, Will you be coming Saturday night? I'm going uh, to try. I, I actually, what time are you guys going on? Wait, ten o'clock. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's my only problem with it is, and I talked to my wife, and she said, oh, if you want to go, I said, I know, but if I sit down on Saturday night at 7 o'clock and I'm not out of the house, I'm going to not get up and want to go to Staten Island. I don't blame you. Yeah, so I said, I, I got, I said I'd like to pop in and and uh, and, uh, and surprise Jeff. So it, it is a possibility. I, I have a pretty easy day on Saturday. I'm, I'm taking my, I'm going out to, to, to lunch with my son. Uh, and his uh, girlfriend, and probably, or maybe some of the other kids, but uh, that's all on, in Jersey. So again, uh, we're, we're debating it, and again, it depends on my uh, how tired I am at, at nine o'clock or eight thirty. Uh, where did we go on Saturday that just passed? Uh, I took my wife to this farm. Oh yeah, that, yeah. You went to a farm? Yes, a farm. <clears throat> wow, I'm impressed. In Jersey? Yes, yes, in Manila. Wow, look, look at you. Oh yeah. Look at me, fifteen dollars a person. Uh huh. Right after we uh, parked, and then you had to pay <clears throat> to get driven to the uh, sunflower fields. Sunflower fields, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. and then two fifty a flower to cut down. Nice. Yeah, plus you to rent the loppers for ten dollars a piece. Because I don't know if you ever tried to rip a sunflower in half. Like I don't think the fucking the Incredible Hulk could do it. <laughs> Very hard. My wife, my wife went to a lavender this uh, place where they uh, specialize in, I guess, lavender flowers and all this stuff. And she, she, we, was, she wanted me to go with her. And I said, sure, no problem. And she's, oh yeah, one of my girlfriend's work wants to go. You're off the hook. I said, great. One hundred and fifteen dollars later, I had three three things of flowers in my house. Ask her, she, uh, ask her if it was Happy Farms that she went to. I'll have to ask. I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm that 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 does sound. Familiar, and it was definitely close to, to my house. So I was. We went to Happy Farms, mm -hmm. and I mean, you know, it was pretty cool to see a fucking field full of sunflowers. But uh, I, I always thought sunflowers were big. You know, sometimes These were like like little like a little bit bigger than bagels, and I'm yes. like, they're, they're kind of small. You know, and yep. then you had to watch out because bees love sunflowers. Yes. Oh man, <laughs> there was fucking bees everywhere. Everywhere there was bees yeah. everywhere. Oh my god! Yeah, for <sighs> well, my wife, of course, she's like, "I like that one over there. <laughs> get me that one." Yeah, I'm like, it's like you know, I gotta get in there and yeah, I you really like that one. I really like that one. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and you gotta okay. make them happy. Okay. You, got, you gotta yeah. make them happy. You gotta make them happy, yeah. Jeff. Yeah. So then we get them. We get them. We after that, we won't go straight to my mother's house. Mm -hmm. She threw them in water, and then she's like, "Oh, they're just not rebounding. They just don't look nice." And I'm like, "Yeah, I know." So when we leave, she's packing stuff up. I was like, "Just let my mother have them." She's like, "I'll take you. We'll get you sunflowers elsewhere." <clears throat> I want to take one with me. Okay, no problem. It's not going to make the trip, sweetie. It's not going to make the trip, but you know, but, you know, she's happy. If she has one on the counter. Unfortunately, she cut it down, so it's about this big. <laughs> Barely sticks out of the thing, and it's like this. Looks like Jesus on the cross. <laughs> yeah. The people in Israel won't like that last comment, Jeff. The people in Israel put Jesus on the cross. Don't forget well, that. Now we lost all our viewers. Remember, people, Israel, we got the underwear. Don't go nowhere. Oh, All right, it's more Jeff. And that remaining Menachem, he just fucking left. <laughs> hey, Jeff, let's talk about uh, Dave Grohl, Foo Fighters, and the vaccination only concert. I mean, I, I, again, I guess it is their right. I, I guess, it, you know, I, I don't know if there's any sort of uh, bias that can be claimed or, you know, uh, you're excluding people from things. But what's your thought on, on Foo Fighters? And there are other bands that are talking about, uh, D. Snyder's talked about. Doing vaccination only concerts and uh, some other people. What's your thoughts on that? I'm trying to see. Uh, mm. I don't believe they should do it. I believe that uh, mm. you know, just just get out there and fucking play. You're far enough away from all of these people. Yeah, you know what I mean. <clears throat> if if that's how you feel, then then you shouldn't be out playing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Come on. I, I agree. Listen, I you know, why are you pissing off half the people who probably are fans of his? And again, I'm not a huge Foo Fighters fan. I'm definitely not a huge Dave Grohl fan. I I I'm a I uh realize how talented the guy is, but I'm not a huge fan. But I don't know. I mean, here's what I say. If you're going to a concert, first of all, the band's far enough away. So good you you're 100 percent right. If you don't want to be there with va vaccinated people, unvaccinated people, don't go. If you're vaccinated, if you're unvaccinated and you want to go, go to the concert. If you don't want to go because everybody else is vaccinated, don't go. I, I just I don't like the idea of these guys. It's almost like they're they're shaming, they're vac shaming people. You know, you're not. They are. And I, they are. I, I think that's un I think that's not right. And I and I hope people push back on it. What they should do. Is turn around and say, listen, we want to come out and we want to play. Okay. Right. And we realize that we have to follow certain parameters, but we want to make sure that we could go out and play again, that we're safe so that we could continue to entertain people for a while now. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to have the stage set up like a usual concert. There'll be nobody that sits behind the stage. Okay. One row on each one row, one section. On each side of the stage, there'll be nobody in that. Right. Okay. Right. So if 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 this is the stage and there's a section that comes down, that section will remain empty. One section in front of that is where the people will start. Same thing in the front. Mm -hmm. Keep another twenty five row buffer. There's no twenty for the first twenty five rows. There's nobody there. Mm -hmm. The first row starts at row twenty six. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, and in this here way, you you've given yourself plenty of room. And you're still able to entertain. And you can still turn around and say, you know what? We want to make sure that our fans get to enjoy us and everything else. So what we're going to do is, is every city that we're going to play, if we could play two nights, we're going to play two nights. This here way, you could buy tickets for one of two nights mm -hmm. and make it that, you know what? I can't sell you tickets for shows one and two in, in New Jersey. You can only buy tickets for one show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. And then this here way, if whether it's by email address, whatever the case is, and then this here way, everybody gets a chance because now you're going to say if it's a thirty thousand seat arena, we're going to uh, allow uh, twenty thousand people in because we're going to cut down ten thousand people, so that we're safe and you're safe, and that's all they got to say. Yeah, that's I all agree. they got to say. I you agree. Know? And, and they could put plastic mm -hmm. in front of them and everything because. It does not matter what they're doing on the stage. It's going to matter what's coming through the sound system. 100%. 100%. And, uh, I mean, listen, nobody's going to say anything. They're, they're going to be like, oh, you're right, man. You're right. You're right. You're right. And yeah. That's how, it's, that's how it is. And that's, you know, it's, that's a fucking shame. 
Yeah, I just like said I, I'm I'm not a fan of it. I'm not. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm I'm not. Uh, can you send Bobby my telephone number, or email address to get in touch with me? I really think the world. Uh, um, okay, Matt. Matt's looking for me to send Bobby's uh, Bobby his his info. Let's see if I can do it. I'll, I'll ask Bobby if he's interested. <clears throat> uh, his cousin's band. Yeah, I've heard them. They're, they're not bad. They're, the music's pretty good. A little thrashy. I'm not crazy about the singer's voice and the and the and the vocal part of it. I have to be honest. I I, and I told that to Matt, and I'm I'm completely honest about it. But uh, I mean, I don't know. I didn't hear them, but uh, I mean, you know, Bobby's busy with his own thing, and and hopefully getting his own stuff off the ground. So who knows? You never know what he could possibly do to help somebody. You never know. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll send Bobby a message and just say, can you check out this band and let me know if you're interested in. You know, doing something with them. Um, you know, I, I have their a contact for them, so I'll start with, I'll start with that. Um, uh, let's see, Jeff. Let's talk about Maiden. Um, we talked. Bobby brought him up before. Uh, I I know we talked about it off the air, so I'll get it on the air from you. Have you listened to the new Maiden uh, single? Yes, I broke down and listened to it. Well, well let me ask you a question. When you say broke down, you're a huge Maiden fan. I'm saying that's huge. You're a big Maiden fan from back in the day. Uh, wouldn't you be at least curious? Besides. You know, just say, hey, you know, let me take a listen. Maybe this is an old school song. You know, so what 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 was so difficult about tuning in to, to listen to a, a ten, you know, seven minute song? I, well, that's just it. A seven minute song could feel like a very, very long time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the song does not sound anything at all like Maiden to me. I really didn't even <clears throat> notice Steve Harris in the mix. He, I'm not going to say he's buried, but he definitely doesn't stand out to the point he once did. Mm -hmm. To me, I, I may be wrong, but to me, okay. that's what it sounds like. Okay, and uh, I, I just, I, I mean, how much more are you gonna do, man? You don't have to write any more shit. I, I really don't think there's many people that are gonna say that. You know what? I want to hear. I hope my Maiden puts out a new album. I, I just don't see it after a certain point in time. I just don't think that some of these bands even need to do it anymore. Maiden could come around every other year and do a show. You know, and and everybody would be happy. And and to tell you the truth, I've probably at this point there's probably just as much Maiden that I've never heard that I actually did hear. They could never touch the early stuff again. And I know bands move on. I know bands get older and they mm -hmm. and they grow. I understand all of that. Mm -hmm. But you want to know something? Those first two albums, they'll never in a million years ever touch that. That, that those are masterpieces. They're up here. Yeah. Okay. Number of the beast, peace of mind. These are albums that are never going to be touched. I s really stopped getting into Maiden with No Prayer for the Dying. When when uh, No Prayer for the Dying came out back mm -hmm. in 91, 90, whatever it was, they that was at, at that point, that was it. I, I it was the last album that I can honestly say that I went out and purposely bought. I couldn't wait to get it. Right. I just Nothing does nothing for me. Same with Priest. Nothing. Um, I'll tell you the last Priest album, Firepower, I thought was actually a good album. I bought I bought the vinyl. I, it was a good album. I won't say it was great. Again, here's the thing I'll tell you about the Maiden album. The song was okay. It, it's nothing wrong with it. It's a very progressive. It's it's a very progressive Iron Maiden. Um, the sound is the it, it's the same sound I've heard on Book of, Book of Souls, um, Final Frontier. You know, it, it's not terrible. But it's it's not one of those songs uh, or the, and those albums are not albums that I reach for all the time. The last Maiden album that I would say I actually reach for or there's a bunch of songs I like on it is Brave New World. That came out in '99. I went to the, I went to see that concert with uh, um, that was with uh, uh, Rob Hal Halford's band. I don't know if it was Fight and uh, Queensrÿche and uh, PNC. Great show. I love the album. Uh, but since then, everything's got more and more and more progressive. And I haven't heard this new album yet. The song's a good song, Jeff. It's just not a song where I'll go, man, I can't wait to hear that song again. It just sounds like anything else they've been doing lately. You're right. I didn't love the mix. I didn't pay attention to the Harris thing like you did. But I didn't like the way the song's mixed. I didn't. I'm not crazy about it. But it's not terrible. Well, I'm, I'm not saying it's terrible. I don't think that they're capable of making terrible music. Right. They're just capable of making music that I don't want to hear. Yeah, but, uh, you know, and, and to me, 
right now at this point in time, do I want to see a group of 60 something year old men writing fucking seven, eight, nine minute songs, 12 minute songs? There is nothing that is recorded that's 12 minutes long that I want to sit down and listen to. I'll you know what I mean? You. At I'll this point in time, four, four and a half minutes, five minutes tops. Let's get this over with, man. I agree with you. you. Know? I agree with you um, from that sense. I think Maiden has gotten to the point where it's – I know you, you. they record for themselves. They, they write the music they love. But I would love to hear – you know, a song that sounds like "Die with Your Boots On" that's three to, three minutes and fifty eight seconds long, and you know, punches you in the face and got a little bit of a melody to it. You know, I, again, I I kind of long for those. You know, even Brave New World, the songs are so long. The the you know, it's got the way up, then it's got the, the you know the slow down. <laughs> it's listen, I love Maiden, I always do it, I, but I kind of agree with you. You know, right now that they, they'll they'll you know every other year come out with a new album. And then they'll do a tour off of that. They'll take a break. They'll come back a year or change later, and they'll play an old concert. You know, I've got a couple of them now, and they'll do a, do like a you know uh, uh, number of the beast tour. <clears throat> they'll do the whole concert, um, and they'll do a tour doing that, and then they'll come back with a new album. Yeah, I will just do the um, go back and revisit the old concerts, uh, come up with some new ideas. The new songs, uh, you know, even at the concerts, they play one or two, maybe three of the songs off the album, and they're playing old songs anyway. Uh, Maiden's Alive is still great. I, 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 the last time I saw them, I think I was with you, and yeah. I thought it was a great concert. So I, Still <clears throat> great and everything live, of course. They're yeah. talented musicians. You can't take that away from them. But here's the thing, all right? You've been at it now for over 40 years, okay? Uh, yeah. People don't want to hear the new stuff to me in my I eyes. I grow, actually, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. As a fan, <laughs> only part, I don't want to hear the old new stuff. Right. Okay. There's nothing that you could write now that I'm going to be like, holy shit, listen to that, man. That's better than Invaders. It's not. It's yeah. not. You know what I mean? As corny as Run to the Hills is, it's still Run to the Hills. It's great yeah. shit. Uh, Ace is high. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, Prisoner. Yeah, uh, all of the stuff off in uh, Number of the Beast, Number of the Beast itself, the song Number of the Beast. Yeah, uh, Where Eagles Dare, Killers. How you can't you can't touch that stuff. I, I don't want to fucking hear Brave New World and Book of Souls and the fuck out of no. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want it. And whatever the new songs, the name of the new song was. No, yeah, it's again, just not for me. it was again. Was like you said, it wasn't a terrible song. <laughs> it's just not one of, you know, it's like listen to the, the to the last few Kiss albums. I bought them. <clears throat> Is it good music? Yeah, it's good music, but it's got no hook to it. <clears throat> it has nothing to make you want to go back and listen to it over and over again. You know, I've bought albums in the last decade or maybe before. You know, where you put it on and you want to hear a, you know hear a song or two and you're like, I want to hear it again. I want to hear it again, and you wear it out. These albums, yeah. the last Kiss couple few Kiss albums. Uh, the, the last few made albums, I listened to the whole album, and then I'm like, "That's the last time I played." It's up, in, it's uh, it's in the the rack, and when I go listen for Kiss uh, for for a made album or a Kiss album. It's it's old school, so keep making it because because it keeps them out there playing. But uh, I'm not I'm not great on the new song. It's okay. It's not terrible. no. That's to me. That's part of the problem. <laughs> that's actually part of the problem. Okay. <laughs> Well, you want to keep coming out and touring and everything else, yeah. whether they feel as though that they have to put out an album. I don't think they're doing that for the money at this point. In time. No, they don't strike no. me as a money bend. Mm -hmm. I think that they're actually doing it because they still feel as though that they have, they're capable of writing some stuff. And I'm sure they are. Yeah. I'm sure they are. You're not going to come up with a 10, 11 minute song. If you, if you thought that you're just fucking sacking it and, and putting it out there to sell. Yeah. But uh, I just don't think that a band mm -hmm. like Iron Maiden at this point in time has to put out an album with, you know, eight, mm -hmm. nine, 10, 11, yeah. 12 minute songs. Like it just, come on, I man. Agree. I agree. It's I'm, not, again, it's not yeah. I, I agree with you, Jeff. I, I, I wish they would go back to the old formula, but I guess they'll do what's best for them. And, We'll see how it plays you out. Go, I, I, I will buy the new album when it comes out, though. You want to go back to the old formula? Get rid of Yannick Gears. Get uh, rid of Yannick Gears. Please. Please. Give us a couple okay. years without him before it's over and all said and done. Get rid of him. Okay? Compensate him. Leave him behind. 
come out there. The original, well, not, I, I'm going to say the original five because it's what we know for 40 plus years. Come out with the original five that we're used to. Okay. For the first time, everybody's back in the fold. Come out, give us the original five one more time. You consider, okay. you consider Nico a part of the original five, even though Burr did the first three albums? Yeah, I I, I would say He's that. He's been around yeah. 40 years, so I mean, it's close. It's, yeah, Clive Burr is never going to play another yeah. fucking song with Iron Maiden. Nope. It's impossible. Yeah. The man's not here with us anymore. Nope, nope. Okay, I, I, same I, thing, like, not for nothing, Paul yeah. Diano's never performing with Iron Maiden again. It's a shame. That is I a shame. I don't see it. Nope. No, you're right. It. No, you're right. I, I, I would be shocked. Um, see anything like that, and it would might be fun to see uh, him come out there and belt out a couple tunes. Although, uh, from the shape of him, I wouldn't think he could sing very much. Sing I very think well. he would have problems getting out to the microphone. Yeah, <laughs> last time I seen him, last time I yeah, seen no. him, he was in a fucking chair. Yes, chair. yes, uh, yeah. So, again, not, not, not great ratings here. Listen, I'm a main fan when the album comes out, I will go buy it, but I will tell you, it's already there. We're talking about it's a it's three disc album, I believe. Um, it's not that many songs, so that means that songs are all long length. I did see, I didn't check the length. I think it's an eighty-two minute album, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see <clears> if I can get. Let me see if I can get it. You pull it up, uh, Jeff and Tom, Hard Rock and Sports. We got a couple more minutes. Uh, we're gonna don't forget we're off next week, but back on the te- on the on August fifth, big NFL training camp show. Jeff and I get to talk football the entire time. Which you know what, the uh, July is always a tough month for the show because. Not a lot of content out there that we want to drag in. We got we got the, a lot of stuff tonight. We even dragged in the underwear. The underwear. Oh my there. god! What's the matter? The the <clears throat> senjutsu or senjutsu? Yeah, yeah. senjutsu. Super, yeah. super yeah. deluxe box set. <clears throat> this product is on order. Pre order will be released September third. Right. Two CD digipack with twenty eight page booklet. Blu ray digipack of writing on the wall, including many of. Sp- uh, making a special notes for Bruce Dickinson and a 20 page booklet, the writing on the wall movie style poster, set of three art cards, 3D Senjutsu Eddie Le- Lecton. I can't pronounce that word. Uh, printed origami shirt, make Eddie's helmet, all presented in an artwork envelope, one twenty five ninety eight. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I won't be buying that box set, Jeffrey. I can tell you that. Yeah, much. let me see if uh, <clears throat> length. Yeah, see if we get the, the length of the album. I'm pretty sure I, I saw it on Blabbermouth. I, I didn't pick up Blabbermouth tonight. I should have. 80, 80 minutes. I told you. I thought it's eighty-two minutes. Okay. okay. Yeah. How long is the new I made now? It's a whopper. Those ten tracks above clock in at just under eighty-two minutes. Which are about ten minutes shorter than their previous album, Book of Souls. Think about ten songs, 80, 80 minutes. It's eight minutes a song on an average. I'm sure there's some yeah, under yeah. it, some are over. So we're gonna get Senjutsu, Stratego, The Writing on the Wall, A Lost, Lost in a Lost World. Uh, what what was the other song they had off of uh, Stranger in a Strange Land? Yeah. Now also Lost in a Lost World. Days of Future Past, The Time Machine, Darkest Hour. Death of the Celts. That one sounds like it's going to be long. Oh yeah, uh, the parchment and hell on earth. Yeah, go, you know the problem is it, it's too much now. Um, almost like a concept album that they're not, but they're not concept albums. You know, I liked it better when they just wrote a bunch of different songs about a bunch of different topics. They were three and a half to four minutes each, and uh, we got them done and gone with. So, I interesting. Get where I seen it. Uh, I'm trying to look for. I'm. On, I'm not going to spend too much more time. On, okay. All right. Real quick, I got yeah. some information for you. Okay. Go, ahead, go for it. Senjutsu. Okay. Smith and Harris. Eight minutes twenty seconds. Stratego. Stratego. Janet Gares and Harris. Four fifty nine. The writing on the wall. Smith and Dickinson. Six thirteen. Lost in a lost world. Harris. Nine minutes thirty one seconds. Days of Future Past, Smith Dickinson, four minutes, three seconds. The Time Machine, Janet Gears and Harris, seven minutes, nine seconds. Darkest Hour, Smith Dickinson, seven minutes, 20 seconds. Death of the Celts, 10 minutes, 20 seconds. The Parchment, Harris. Uh, Harris also wrote Death of the Celts. 
the parchment, Harris, 1239. Hell on earth, Harris, 1119. Steve that's yeah. that's fucking long. Wow. The last time that I heard of an album anticipated, an anticipated album, yeah, and with songs that long was the last Tool album. Okay, uh huh. And uh, let me see if I can grab that real quick. If it gives you the times, but there was some like, I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. This they actually wrote song, and so many songs don't have. It's like they don't have any fucking words. Yeah. Ten, no, that's not it. A fear inoculum. No, I don't know. I don't have the num the times here, but you're talking like all of these songs like that was so long. It's like you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. And that's what the maiden shit is. Yeah, it's listen, it's crazy. I, I again I will try to buy the, the vinyl. I'm sure it'll go for about forty five dollars, but I'll you know, I have, I have every other Iron Maiden album. I'm gonna have to purchase that one. So <clears throat> it is what it is, and again, if they come around, I'll go see them again. It's not to me, not too many more times I'm going to be able to do it. So I'll go get. I'll hopefully drag somebody, maybe Paul or somebody or Joey. I doubt Joey. Maybe Paul will go. I know Jeff's sworn off all concerts now, so yeah, <clears throat> it would have to be a, a pretty special one, man. You know that's what just. Was, what if it was the last amazing. Maiden concert, and they were going to do nothing but stuff off the first three albums? I don't know. I don't know. Last Maiden show. This is it. We're coming through New York. It's going to be the last time, and they're only going to play at the Garden with only the first three albums worth of songs. Is Yannick Gears playing? Yannick Gears is going to be there. I Definitely almost guarantee it. Definitely not. <clears throat> I, yeah, Definitely I, not. I, I, will, I have to go to a couple more shows. Uh, Maiden's the one band that gets me to go uh, pretty much all the time, but you know, again, I, I I also feel like if I don't go, I don't feel as bad. I don't um, doesn't bother me as much as it used to because it's a lot of work to go to a concert now. It really, well, is. that's that's part of the problem, Tom. Yeah, the yeah. work involved and everything else. You're yeah. talking about God getting on a on a fucking trek to get to a concert. If it's up in the garden, I a couple times me and you we drove up there, but if not, like I went to a concert with my wife. We took the train, right? So we took the train, and then we I mean, took the bus to the ferry, then the ferry, then the train. Then at the end of the night, you know, especially nowadays, you got to take your life in your hands and fucking yeah. reverse the process. Yeah. So that's more something that I'm like, ah. you're tired halfway through, and you're like, oh. why the fuck did I do this? Oh no, that, that is was it just coming out on Blu-ray? Somebody, you know? Yeah. No, I get it. Uh, again, I I will there. I will see the last Kiss show. That comes through New York. I have to see that. Um, I'll see a couple more made shows along the way. Other than that, I, I can tell you this pro you know, if Triumph came back for a tour, I might go to see Triumph play. That's a band I'd love to see out there. Uh, otherwise, there's not a lot of bands that I would run to go see again. Again, it depends on where it is. You know, going to the PNC to see a show is always good because it's easy for me to get there. Yeah, the PNC is too simple. Yeah. So you just gotta know when to leave. Yes, exactly. But uh, other than that, you know, like I said, I'm I'm not running. But uh, yeah, we got a couple more minutes, Jeff and Tom. I want to talk a little bit of football before we close it up. Uh, again, remember one more time, we will not be back next week. Uh, we'll take the break. Uh, I'll be in Florida. Jeff will be uh, back to work, I guess. Right? Sunday's your first day back. No, Monday. Oh, Monday. Monday. Okay. So, uh, but we're gonna, this we'll fucking it. cocksucker. Your boss. This, this fucking jerk off cocksucker. Oh boy. I hope I hope they find fucking. Sperm in his stomach when they oh, fucking okay. autopsy this scumbag fuck plus pubic hair up in his fucking shit canal oh, because okay. he didn't sign a fucking thing. You scumbag. Well, maybe God. the next man. Maybe the next man will do it. Jeff. I don't give a fuck about the next man. I'll be retired. <laughs> yeah. well, okay, I should have been. I should have been retired. For two weeks. That's true. Two weeks already. It should have been retired. That's true. Uh, and uh, listen, anything's still possible. You get a new mayor in. Uh, Giuliani did it when he came into office. He took over and he immediately uh, worked out a bunch of people getting uh, to retire and move on. So, uh, man, who knows, Jeff? Maybe uh, Eric Adams or Curtis Sliwa, whoever's uh, elected. Curtis, uh, I stand a better <laughs> chance of winning than Curtis Sliwa. I'm rooting for Curtis Lee. Well, I, 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 so am I. So am I. But I'm telling you right now, the next mayor of New York City, these are the people that are going to win before Curtis Lee. Well, you ready? Go ahead. Eric Adams. Yeah. Okay. 
that fucking old sanitation commissioner Garcia that, Garcia that Maya Wiley or whatever the fuck her name is. Okay, those three right off the bat are gonna do get any more votes than fucking Curtis Lee ever could hope <laughs> times ten is ever gonna get. Fred Flintstone, SpongeBob, Mickey Mouse, and me all stand a better chance of winning than Curtis Sliwa. Curtis Sliwa has like 15 cats. I, I saw that. Somebody told me that. The Last other, time that I saw Curtis Sliwa, uh -huh. he came in. We went to up to go see the, the tree. Right. Me and my wife. Uh, we met Paul and Julia. Mm -hmm. And it was raining. So we ducked into a Starbucks to <clears> hang <throat> for a little bit because we had time and it was raining. And, you know, Starbucks, you could do anything you want. Starbucks, they yeah. don't give a fuck. And there was Curtis Sliwa. Just hanging out? out his, uh, what's that? Just hanging out? No, no. He was in there getting stuff, and then he's kind of coming out. But it's like he didn't want nobody to talk to him. This was a while ago, too, a couple of years back. And he's got, like, his coat bundled up, and he's got his fucking red beret on. He's like, like this curmudgeon old man coming in and out of there. And I'm like, oh, it's like Curtis Sliwa. Like, <laughs> I couldn't even say, like, hey, Kurt, what's up? Yeah. You know, it's like. That what you're famous for is done and over with. Nobody gives a fuck about the Guardian Angels no more. I don't even know if they're still in existence. Uh, yeah, I, I actually think they, they are still in existence, yeah. Oh, listen, good for them. <laughs> uh, I hope they stay in existence another 50 years, but Curtis Sliwa, nah, he ain't got it. Oh, I don't even no. see commercials with this fucking guy. Yeah, no, there's what kind of is he running? I have no idea. I, I don't pay attention. I mean, it's like, do they say, you know what? You, you, you you're going to fucking run. You know why? Because we have to have somebody run against them. That's we true. can't just have him run. That's true. You got you to gotta have an opponent. You got to have two people. That's our system, Jeff. Got to have at least two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Jeff, we, we got a week We got a week off. Uh, I'm going to do – I got a lot of homework to do for our our August 5th show. Give me, a, give me a second or two on the football season. What are you looking forward to right now? Like right now, uh, the Jets, you know, you got a new quarterback, fresh blood. Uh, you got – you got – already got maybe your – uh, franchise left tackle uh, in 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 the house already. You got a new coach. What what what? I know it's always you're you're always on the pessimistic side, but give me for a minute. Let Jeff be optimistic. What's got you excited about the New York Jets this year so far? Nothing. 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 And I'll tell you why. Go ahead. They draft a new quarterback. They have this guy Greg Knapp. Yep. He has a fucking accident. Killed, he's dead. He died earlier today. I saw that, yep. Okay, so there's their quarterback whisperer. There was their quarterback coach. He's done. All right, their new left tackle, Becton. Yep. Okay, I said it last year. Please, I wish you could bring these sound bites back for me. I said it last year. This guy's big. He's big, right? Yep. That's what happens? <clears throat> they say that last year he played over his weight of 363 or 367. Mm -hmm. Plus, he has a foot injury. That's wonderful for a guy that weighs almost 400 pounds. Yeah. Okay, that's fucking awesome. That's great, okay? You got Sala, okay? Uh -huh. Is all of a sudden one day he going to be coming into the fucking building yelling a la Akbar and trying to blow up the fucking oh, building with the Jets in it? Oh, boy. Uh, you got to think this. You don't know. All right, well, so we have an unproven coach. You yourself said it. I did. Yes, you did. I you did. did. I got the text. I got it. Right I, 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 I will be happy to admit it. I'll be happy to admit it. Yeah. I think he's I, overrated. So, so uh, we don't know if he's overrated. I just think that he's he's inexperienced, and we don't know what to expect from him. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Zach Wilson, he's going to be just as famous for what he does on the field as his mother does on Instagram. That's very true. I've okay, true. And, yeah. and, and he already unfollowed his mother. Who gives a fuck? Who cares? To, to Zach Wilson's mom, stop your bullshit. Leave your son alone. Let this kid play football. Stay, get the fuck off of social media. You want to say things and you want people to listen to you, go on OnlyFans and take your clothes off and, and stay over there and just stay out of the way of this kid and what he's doing, please. Okay? And speaking of, somebody feed this kid some vegetables or something and let him grow a little bit more. Please fill him out. He looks like a high schooler back there. Mm, he does look young, Jeff. We said the same thing about uh, your boy, uh, uh, the defensive lineman. Uh, what's his name? Quentin Williams. Quentin Williams, yes. He looked like he was 12 years old getting his confirmation suit. Yeah, yeah. It probably was his confirmation suit. <laughs> okay? Yes. As a matter of fact, you know what? If, if you're Douglas, yeah. just trade him already. Trade him. 
You're not going to sign him to a second year, a second deal. I don't know because the Jets don't ain't doing it with with May. Oh. You didn't sign him to a second deal. Yeah, I didn't, you didn't I sign didn't. Adams to a second deal. Get rid of him while you could still get something for him. Come on, you 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 fucking get these pieces. You dangle them and you're like ah nah 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 tag him tag him. And all you did was piss him off. Uh, so I don't know. I don't well, know. Well, you got two weeks, Jeff. To put together some notes, some thoughts. I have guys. notes and I have thoughts. And this is what I'm hoping for this year. Oh I'm hoping God. for the fucking epic, epic collapse of the New York Giants. I'm hoping for the epic fall of Dave Gettleman. I'm hoping for the epic fall of Daniel Jones. Okay? I hope Joe Judge stays in this position for the next seven years. Okay? Barkley... But I don't care. You can have that hat all you want. I don't care. Barkley still don't know when he's playing. Did you know that Barkley? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. A good thing I just remembered. I got to find it. I took a snap of it. Okay, here we go. Two notable giant starters will begin training camp on the pup list, physically unable to perform list. Running backs Saquon Barkley and tight end Kyle Rudolph each received the designation on Thursday, yep. along yep. with center Jonathan Harrison. Tackle Matt Pearl, linebacker O'Shane Eximes, I guess, and rookie cornerback Aaron Robinson. Mm -hmm. For Barkley, the news fits seamlessly with all the storyline that's uh, saddled the promising young talent all offseason as he's recovered from a torn ACL suffered in week two. The 24-year-old stated as recently as Monday that it's still unclear when he'll be cleared to practice. Mm -hmm. That's great news right there. His career is over. His career is over. Thank you, God. Thank you. What Thank do you, you do in, when January comes around and we're in first place and Barkley's running for 1,500 yards and, and Gettleman is the toast of the town? What are you going to do then? What, what's it going to be like? What am I going to do then? What's it going to be like gonna do? Yes. I'll tell you exactly. It's going to be a sad day, and I'll well, tell you why. Why? Because that means if, if all of that's happening, yes, that means that I'm in the hospital – Sitting at your bedside crying that my friend is dying and has an incurable brain disease because that's the only way and only place that any of that is going to happen is in that little mind of yours because it's certainly not happening in real life. So you can forget that shit. I'm telling you, watch my team this year. Uh, I'm please, telling you, the giant please, are a beast. Please, giant please, are a beast. Please. I How could be they be a beast like, in a fucking please. division? Come on. Yeah. You've got a quarterback in Dallas that has one good leg. That's right. And a surgically repaired other. Uh -huh. You got a quarterback in Philly that doesn't know how to throw the ball or do anything with the ball. You don't even have a quarterback in fucking Washington. That's why we're going to win the division. Okay. And you might not even have a fucking quarterback in New York. Oh, we got one. We got one. We got a good one. Yeah, oh, that's what you call them. Okay. Yeah, a good one. That's we got a franchise. Them. There's a franchise quarterback who resides in uh, East Rutherford. Uh, and his oh name is God. Danny God. Dimes. That is like opening up a can of ragu and saying that Emerald fucking cooked it. Okay. Uh, I'm just telling you, the giant. I'm not going to get into it because I got my giant notes. I've already started my work on all the all the divisions and and the Giants and where I think they're going to be. And I will have my my. I will be armed and ready on August fifth to deal with your half-assed and NFL analysis. <sighs> And then we got 17 weeks to this. And I'm looking forward to every one of them. You pictures the other day and yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Almost got you banned. Almost got that, you banned. That hand. Yes. That hand on that leg. Yeah. Went a little further up and touched something. Yeah. Maybe a mouth opened and she licked those fingers. I don't know. Think of that. Okay. I can see your stomach starting to churn now. I'll bring the underwear back. I'm gonna bring the underwear. Oh, back. you could bring the underwear back all you want. I trade a hole. I don't care. Well, no, no, no. Think about the hole, Tom. That's what. No. Speaking of the hole, think no. about the hole. No hole. I'm not thinking about nobody's hole. Just show. That's exactly that. what it looked like. Wide open like that. Oh yeah. There it is. Oh, that's definitely. That's definitely what it looked like. That's where the Johnson goes. There's the. Yes. There's the little. There's the little. The nugget hole. The little saddle for the nuggets. That's that's where little bumpy Dom went. <laughs> August fifth, folks. Jeff and Tom talking NFL football. We'll break down all the divisions. Uh, oh, we'll talk about God, who I we can't, I can't, I, uh, What's the matter? 
No, I just all this time I'm trying to to save you from yourself. Yeah, save me. I am. I am. I know I'm not saving you. Nothing. It's nothing is going right here. No, the Giants. Going right. My Giants will win the division, uh, and they will make a nice run in the playoffs. I do not know if they'll um, get to a championship game this year, but we are on course for that mission. Uh, the defense is set. The offense, uh, we'll see. I love the Kyle Rudolph thing. I I, I love um, Barkley coming back. I think we're going to have some some, uh, some firepower this year and a big year out of Danny Dimes. Big year. Big transition here. Looking forward to it. So, guys, you make sure you come on back on that date. But uh, we'll, uh, I think we're going to end it right here. It's about 925. Uh, guys, if you're on Saturday, on Saturday night, make sure you go see Jeff's band at 10, 10 o'clock, 1030 at, uh, at Mugshots. I'm no, 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 no. Mother Pugs. Mother, Mother Pugs. Pugs, sorry. Mother Pugs, uh, Saturday night. Uh, uh, Jeff's got some interesting thoughts on what might happen. I'll find out about it off the air. But, yeah, uh, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call you tomorrow. I'll tell you what's what's going on, so you know. And uh, yeah, it's good. It's, it's interesting. It's it's different. It's interesting. It's <laughs> it's like why uh, I have a list, uh-huh. right? A, a set list. Uh, let me see if I can get it real quick. Yes, I I have 23 songs. Okay. Okay. I'm probably gonna be lucky to play half of them. Wow. I guess uh, there's a lot of not. Uh, a lot of non-practicing uh, members of the Jeff Band, so we'll see. But guys, if you're if you're around, uh, g- get out there and uh, go to Mother Pugs and check where's, out where's Patrick tonight. I don't know. I haven't seen. There's a bunch of people now. You know, again, summertime. Um, you know, people out doing their thing. It's nice weather. People are out running around. So you know, if if people in Israel uh-huh. can give us an eight share, these people need to be here on Thursday nights. I, I just don't disagree. We had a winner. I saw uh, 106 people were viewing the show tonight early, so that's a good sign. That was because of Bobby Gustafson. and how many uh, people are viewing the show now. It, hel- it helps. It does not hurt. That. You know, I got on it. I got a couple of guests that I'm real close, real close. It's this close to some couple of big names being on the show. This close. Well, I'd like to let you down. Go ahead. With something. I had somebody on the hook. Oh, you did? Yes, I did. Yes, big I name? did. Big name? Not a big name, but a uh, one of the guitar players from Overkill. Oh, really? Yes, I was uh, talking in a forum somewhere, I forget where, and this woman informed me that uh, that was her brother-in-law. Okay. So I was like, oh, so it would be great if you can help me get in touch with your brother-in-law so I could try to get him on the show and, and describe what we do. Right. So we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. She then turns around and says, listen, you can talk to him, but I don't think that he's going to be involved. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Thank you anyway. So I tried. I talked, reached out to him to see yeah, what, yeah. what could happen. And he was like, well, tell me some more about the show. And I'm like, all right, this is going good, you know? Yeah. And then pff, nothing. Really? Yeah, really. Yeah, and he was just like, listen, he goes, normally I don't do stuff like that and everything else. So I'm like, ah. All right, it is what it is. What could you do? We got the yeah. guitar play from Overkill on on the show tonight, so it don't matter. Well, he hasn't been in Overkill in thirty years, so he's no longer the guitar player in Overkill. Well, doesn't matter to me. But yeah, I, I got I am this close on two guests. One of them I think is a lock. The second one I think is 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 going to be good to go. Um, now let me. I hope you're not dealing with some other people that promised you somebody from Priest and never delivered. Well, I would say one of them is yes, um, and I had, I had a private conversation. I'm not getting, we're not getting Halford, but they're they're. I've been promised Ian Hill. I'll say it uh, as soon as they're ready to, to 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 talk, which is sometime probably in August. So it looks like we'll have Ian Hill on, and then which is cool. Yep, and then uh, I got another one. We've talked to this guy before. I think it's a pretty big name, and uh, uh, I got uh, two or three emails back so far from his people. Uh, I think right now it's just a matter of dates. Yeah, and he's and he is in England, so it, it is a time problem because seven o'clock our time would be midnight his time. Now the last time we talked to him, uh, we got around it, and he and he did the show anyway. We talked to him at like one o'clock in the morning, but uh, you know he's a little bit of an older gentleman, so we'll see how that works out. Oh boy, <laughs> yep. this doesn't sound very good. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. I think it's a good one. I mean. Uh, you know, I'm 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 uh, I don't like to kick names around because you know sometimes it doesn't work out. But no, 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 no I'm not looking at your feet to say yeah. a name. Even uh, off the, uh, it's just when you say older gentleman, 
Uh, and every, time, everybody time everybody. issues. I don't want to ha us having to do the show at like fucking seven o'clock in the no, morning. No, I tell you what, I've learned one thing is um, I don't change. I don't want to change the show for anybody. Listen, if Giza Buzzer says, you know, if you can start at six p.m. instead of seven, to, and I'll come on the show, I'll make the accommodation. But ninety nine percent, I've I've had other guests. He'll come on, but he wants to do it on Thursday at one o'clock. No, I'm sorry, I don't do the show on Thursday at one o'clock. The show is. You know, I don't want to tape interviews. I want to do them live on the air. That's what I want. Well, you know what? You have to see who it is. Sometimes right. it, it is it is what it is. But yeah. I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the only couple of people I think I ever did it that for was Andy Parker from UFO. <laughs> where I did like a, a, a mid-afternoon thing, and then I think I played it on the air. And somebody, uh, Phil Collin from Def Leppard, the last time I interviewed him, I did it in the middle of work. Like, uh, I don't know how I got through it. So, but... Uh, you know, again, that was a favorite for Nikki because he's a huge fan of the guy and he wanted to kind of keep chatting with him. So, uh, I guess but, you didn't go to watch him lift that thing, huh? I did not. To be honest with you, I was I was working a little late and uh, and and the problem was I got to work at five and he wasn't going on. It wasn't happening till like seven thirty or eight o'clock and I was so tired. I just said I'm going home. So I have not spoken to him. And to be honest with you, I I called him a few weeks back and he texted me a little while after and said, "Oh, I know he's ready to call me. I'll call you later." And I still haven't heard from him. So I'm kind of like, you know, not for nothing, but with friends, you know, you return the call. I mean, I called to see how you were feeling. Yeah, I hear you. I've texted him a couple <laughs> times and stuff. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I, if you had gone to that, I would have made, uh, I would have tried to do what I got to do. But when I didn't hear from you with it, I was like, yeah, I, I was up in the air. And if I was going to go, I was going to be leaving from Brooklyn. So I don't know. I, again, it's, it's during the week. I have to be honest with you. I've gotten a little old now. And I just enjoy getting home after work and I work on a show or or um, I have some other hobbies. Uh, and I like to get in the door because I just hate sitting in traffic. It's hard Under, enough. To underwear critiquing. Yeah, I have, I have I have to try on underwear. Go on. Get on with the, the Mexican boner people. I have I people to talk to. I guess you didn't get no mail, huh? I got no mail. I did talk. I had to have a consultation with the doctor. Really? I'll tell you what. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you didn't do that, did you? <laughs> ah, yes, sir. You need the pill. Boing. Anyway, so guys, let's wrap this up. I had a great play. This was a blast of a show. For, for not having much material, we got through it pretty good. And uh, thanks to Bobby for doing 40, 45 minutes with us. Uh, yeah, what the fuck, man? I remember he came on, yeah. and I was like, fuck, he ain't coming on. First of all, I was like, oh, he's going to come on. He's going to abuse me because I'm a Jet fan. He does it all the time, this scumbag. Yeah. And then he came on, and it was really cool. Yep. So I was like, all right, that's cool. Everything is good. But then you were like, I don't think we, I don't know how to get them on. I was like, oh, fuck me. Yeah, I was trying everything. I, I sent them everything. And then I, I, there's a link. You can add, there's a spot where I can actually send out an email. Usually I copy and paste. I copy the, the link and I go to e, my AOL and I send you out an email. I'll do it to you or any other guest. But there's actually a way to just click a button at the window and it emails directly. So I tried that and it seems like that worked. Oh. Well, as long as we got him on, that's all yeah. that matters. Yeah, and listen, I I think Bobby's one of those guys. If we, you know, we had a we had a bad week and we were bored, we can call him anytime. He's one of those guys that just will jump yeah, out. of course, of course. I, I, evidently, Mister Gustafson is not exactly, uh, you know, <laughs> up with technology. I guess you know. <laughs> Yeah, so, but uh, it was fun to talk to Bobby, and we do appreciate. And, uh, and I, did, I saw something hidden today. You saw what? I saw something hidden today. What'd you so say? I was going to say something to him. What's that? Okay. He had glasses. Did you notice he had glasses? No. Yeah, he had glasses. He wasn't wearing them. Okay. He left all glasses on because I was like, I'm going to take the glasses off. It's Bobby Gustafson. Yeah. It's like, I can't even see the fucking computer in front of me now. I got to wear the glasses so I can see. <laughs> yeah. Right? So I'm like, ah, he's going to say something. And then as soon as we came on, I seen him like this. He put it, he, he tucked them under oh, his really? I didn't see. Yeah. So I was going to say to him, like, you know, you can put them back on, you know, <laughs> if you need to see there, uh, Dad. Yeah, he's uh, Bobby's not uh, any younger than us, that's for sure. He's got us beat by a year or two, I would imagine. Yeah, he's, he's uh, just hit 56. Okay, so there you go. But, uh, yeah, so I wish Bobby and them uh, hit the whole band well, and we'll keep track of the, the new music. I, I only heard the cover song. I didn't hear any, any new stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, 
Uh, again, thanks to my dad. Thanks to everybody who paid attention online and, and uh, checks in with us. Thanks for all our fans in Israel for, for, for building the numbers back up from six to uh, close to eight or into the eights right now. So we're glad to hear that. We're, we're moving forward toward 10. That's right. Pinky Macberg and the czar, man. That's Won't it. be here next Thursday, but the following Thursday we will. We will be back. Right. Right. And now uh, we'll, we'll I've invited a few people already to come on. I haven't gotten any responses, but I'll hope to get a few uh, few fans popping in to give us a little breakdown of their teams and their divisions. Yeah. So, sure, uh, definitely, man. To reach out to a couple different people. Listen, yeah. we gotta we gotta we gotta get this show off the ground. We got you know the, we got the NFL season getting ready to kick off. Yeah. We're, we're trying to fucking. Uh, Make our claim over there in Israel. You got the czar, you got the rabbi. You got the underwear. Good. Yeah, but you are the rabbi, man. I'm not the rabbi. Oh, this, yes, you are. You I have am, to be. I am not the rabbi. This is the hard rock of And I am I am Tom Florio. That's my partner. That's Chef Tawinski. And we're here every Thursday, except for next Thursday. And we do this each week for, for two and a half to three hours. And we're glad uh, football season's around the corner, folks. And this show. If nothing else is built on football, we do a lot of stuff. But when football season's here, boy, the show just is is never. We can't get enough time. So, can you get the halfway on? I am going to work. That is one of the people I have reached out to. I have not heard back from. I did it very uh, late before the show. I am going to push to get the half man and helmet for the August fifth show. I'm hoping. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. But guys, I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Uh, it's I think it's supposed to be pretty decent weather. Uh, but uh, make sure you get out to Staten Island, go out to uh, Mother Pugs, check out Jeff uh, 1030 uh, Saturday night. If you're around uh, the Hot Shots area tomorrow, get to see our good friend Johnny Collins. Uh, his band's playing uh, tomorrow night over there at 9 o'clock. So if you're in Staten Island, you want to hear some good music Friday and Saturday night, make sure you go to Hot Shots on Friday, Mug Shots on Saturday. Uh, of course, uh, check, uh, check our uh, Spotify and Facebook pages for uh, uh, more information on upcoming shows and guests. And, of course, uh, try to enjoy your weekend, guys. Stay safe. And uh, if you can't stay safe, have fun doing whatever it is you're doing. If you blow something up, what the hell? But, yeah, there uh, you go. But, then, yeah, again, for uh, for Jeff and myself, Jeff, I'll give you the last word. Anything you want to end with? Nah. All right. Well, then, uh, nah, Jeff. There's, there's, there's nothing I could say <laughs> other than uh, next week I'm going to relax, take it easy on Thursday night. It'll be my first week back. Yep. You know, we got Pinky Mac down in Florida. Uh, the Czar will be up here. But, you know, we'll, we'll be with you anyway. Yeah, I will always here. Uh, maybe you could play a rerun of the show. I can I think I can actually do that. So I maybe I'll rerun this one. I'll have to take a look. I might try to throw up the old uh one of the old shows um uh maybe uh, the Giza Butt interview show or Lita Ford's uh, maybe I'll try to do that. That might be a fun. Or well, maybe you could get the uh half man when he was wearing a helmet. I have to get that. I keep promising I'm going to get that off and uh, be able to put that as a, a loop on the show and be able to just play that every once in a while. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, we'll Please. see what happens. But, uh, guys, listen, stay safe. Enjoy your week. I'll be in Florida. I'll be checking in on Facebook. And, uh, you know, you guys uh, come up. Enjoy your weekend. Come on back next Thursday night when Jeff and I do this all over again. Uh, again, uh, enjoy the Yankees. Uh, big series with Boston. Uh, they're in the rain delay now, but the Yankees are uh, – Played some good baseball. Uh, back to bunting and a lot of base stealing. Uh, it's been some fun Yankees this week. So if you get a chance to keep an eye on the Yankees in Boston, big rivalry. Uh, other than that, uh, guys, enjoy your weekend. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks on the Hot Rocket Sports Show, August 5th, NFL Training Camp Show. So uh, for Jeff Tawitsky, myself, and everybody here at Hot Rocket Sports, I say good night. Thank you. See you in two weeks. See you, Hefe. Shalom. <laughs> Shalom. <laughs> Later. Later, man. <laughs>